Look at me, Mom! I'm on top of the world! There's something about being insane! I got something you want here, don't I? Rising up to the challenge of the mortal in the eye of the stinger. Man! Woo! It feels like showtime every minute to me! I can't help it! Sting, there are very few men in this business that I respect, and you're one of them. They call you the icon, because that's who you are. You're one of the very best. Sting, you've stepped over the line now. You've taken it too far. Everybody thinks you're snapped. I'm, I'm not snapped. I just, I just feel good. But in hardcore justice, I'm coming after you. It's strictly business, nothing personal. I got something you want here, don't I? I'm not done yet. Man, you guys are unruly. Get it together, would you? Come on, are we a team or not? Rising up to the challenge of the mortal. But in hardcore justice, the man that's going to walk away with the world title is Kurt Angle. This belt is my lifeblood. It is everything that I need right now to right the ultimate wrong. This company belongs to Dixie Carter. It does not belong to Hogan and Bischoff. Losing is not an option for me, Kurt. I can't lose. At Hardcore Justice, I'm going to walk out with my hand raised, and that's what's real. Rising up to the challenge of the mortal in the eye of the stinger. There's something about being insane. TNA Wrestling and Direct Auto Insurance present Hardcore Justice. Tonight, live from Orlando, Florida, it's a night of champions. No less than five title matches will be contested but none more important than the Icon Sting versus the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle for the World Heavyweight Championship. And speaking of championship bouts, we kick off Hardcore Justice, brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance with the first title match of the night, X Division Gold at Stake in a three-way bout. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the X Division Championship. Introducing first from Detroit, Michigan, Alex Shelley. One half of the Motor City Machine Guns tag team, Alex Shelley, has his sights set on singles gold. A oh, great opportunity here for Shelley. This will be a three-way dance, basically, for the X Division title. You have exhibition athletes going. Get ready for some excitement and a little bit of exuberance. And his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Austin Aries. My man right here. You know a big Aries fan, you know that. I think it's probably because you see a lot of yourself in Austin Aries. Well, absolutely, especially his in-ring style reflects a lot of what I did back in the day. You know this. Well, no, I was thinking more of that win at all costs that Austin oh, yeah. Aries brings to the X Division. Well, that too, of course. Very flamboyant as well. Look at the, the athleticism of Aries just going over the top rope like that. How quick footed the man is. And from Venice, California, it's the X Division champion, Brian Kendrick. Oh, Kendrick with some kind of a funky new tune he's got going on. It looks like uh, funky new pants as well. Got it. Oh, he's wearing like tablecloth around his waist. What he's got going on there? Something like a circus type fellow would wear. I don't know. Kendrick is very off colored, bizarre fellow, but he is the X Division champion. And he can flat out go. Brian Kendrick victorious back at Destination X when he defeated the monster Abyss representing Immortal to capture that X Division title. Yeah, I mean, definitely was an underdog in that match, but Brian Kendrick pulled it off. Might be a little tough here. 
Walkman is Kendrick. What a great way to open this Hardcore Justice live pay-per-view event. Referee Brian Hebner holding aloft the X Division title belt that will go to the winner. It's first pin or first submission in this three-way matchup that will either take home the gold or retain that championship if Brian Kendrick happens to be victorious. Well, you gotta, you, know, you don't wanna make mistakes when it's a three-way match. You gotta be careful who's gonna make that first move, who's gonna double up on one guy. Two guys might team up for a little bit, but it is every man for himself. Well, we have seen how Brian Kendrick and Alex Shelley are at least on the same page when it comes to the spirit of competition in the X Division. Yeah, they might be on the same page when it comes to that, but at the end of the day, you know as well as me, Alex Shelley, he wants to be crowned the new X Division champion in, in this match, just as uh, Austin Aries does. So that friendship thing gets put aside when the title's on the line. Couldn't have been more, every man for himself, as Shelley drops Aries, and then Hendrick, the running clothesline, takes Austin Aries out to the floor. Yeah, Brian Kendrick, a load of momentum with that, that clothesline. Now what? I don't know what's going on here. It looks like Shelly might have something in mind with Kendrick, or... I don't know, maybe not. We told about their friendship. I thought they were going to try and work as a unit for a moment. Champion Kendrick, one of the two challengers, Shelly, to square off. And as far as Austin Aries is concerned, this can be a good strategy to stay alive in the match, but at the same time, keep your eyes on the action in the ring and ensure that there's not a pin while you're on the outside looking in. Oh, quick. Alex Shelley was just bending Ryan Kendrick like a pretzel up and down and had a quick cover there. Kendrick was able to kick out. Alex Shelley, on a, just a tremendous athlete. Gotta get that skunk thing going on ahead. Kinda funky, I like it a little bit. With the skunks. Shelly's been there before. One skunks? previous oh. reign as the X Division champion. Held that title for two months back in 2009 after winning it at our Genesis pay-per-view event. But that just several whips right there just snapping down Brian Kendrick. And notice how Alex Shelly has his eyes on Austin Aries. Nice ankle pick right there by Shelly again working the lower body. That's smart. Watch your back here. And that's what Shelly was anticipating. Gives up the hold on Kendrick to lay the knife edge chop to the chest of Austin Aries. Well, Austin Aries is picking a spot. That wasn't the right spot. Aries <laughs> got lit up with a chop for sure. Oh, wait a I don't know what Kendrick was doing there for a moment. If you can see that. He's putting something in the table for <laughs> Kendrick has not been able to get, you know, get out of the box here with, with Alex Shelley. Alex has been one step ahead of Bryant. And at the same time, Austin Aries has been a very interested observer from outside. I mean, Aries is doing the right thing. I get, like I said, trying to find the right opportunity to get involved in this match. I don't think uh, Shelley realizes that Aries is holding on to Kendrick's leg. Oh, oh. Nothing fancy about that. <laughs> yeah, Shelly just really couldn't take it anymore. Finally had to lay that right hand in for Aries. It's almost like Shelly and Kendrick don't do not want Aries in this match, but he's in it. He's not in the ring much right now, anyway. Look at this, look at this. Quick pin attempt here on Kendrick by Shelly, but then he's able to turn around. Inverted atomic drop for Austin oh. Aries. The follow drop kick by the champ. Look at this, look at this. Hold on, there you go. Shelly gonna try and I steal it. I told you, so much for being buddies right there. Alan Shelly went for the proverbial quick one. Well, that buddy thing can only go so far in a match with the X Division Championship at stake. And we hear big news regarding the X Division is on the way. Impact Wrestling upcoming this week. Back to a hammerlock. Nice overhook by Brian Kendrick. Turned into an arm ringer and 
He had control, Kendrick did, but yep. Lost it, though. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go. Kendrick oh. elevated by Shelly, but Aries comes in from behind, breaks the back of Shelly, and then what's the deal with Aries going I, down? I have no clue what just happened. I did see Aries break the back of Shelly, as you said. Ooh. Exchange here between Alex Shelly and Brian Kendrick. Forearm shots as they match, match each other with forearm for forearm. Oh my God, Brian Kendrick just blasted Shelly. What about getting smashed? You guys are throwing haymakers. Shelly off the ropes and Kendrick extends the leg. Catches Shelly in the face. And it's the oh. champion. Playing, maybe he was playing a little possum, I think. Right so. That's a funky looking possum. <laughs> champion Kendrick tried to dive on Shelly. Cut off by Aries. Then he sliding drop kick to the floor. Ooh. Big jumping elbow. Leads to a cover and Aries a two count. This Austin Aries, he, he can just do a lot of damage real quick. And well, We talked earlier about the hybrid style that he brings to the X Division. I love his he, style. He, he can fly, but he can beat you on the mat as well. He's intense. Austin Aries brings a lot of intensity. Everything he does has such snap to it. So impressive, but right now, the X Division champ looking impressive in Brian Kendrick. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Oh, man, did you see the way that... The champ Kendrick caught his leg and his ankle on the apron on the way down. That's what happened. That good way to break the ranking when you hit that apron like with all that momentum of force. Aries wants Kendrick to get up. I was Kendrick. I wouldn't. Oh my God. Ooh. Well, that time Shelly outsmarted Aries. Outside into the shoulder block and flip right across the back of Aries and then roll through. Went to the clothesline. Got cut off immediately. Oh. Dually effective move. First across the knee, then drops him down. Gonna swing here. Could be that pendulum elbow drop that we've seen from the past. Instead, takes Kendrick right out of play. That was smart right there, Austin Aries. He waited, he waited, and he saw that Kendrick got to the apron and shut him down. And then went, got, right, got right back on Shelly. Watch Aries here, Mike. Watch Aries. Oh, my God. That's what we talked about moments ago. The fact that Austin Aries can not only ground his opponent, beat him down in terms of mat wrestling, but he can hit you out of nowhere with a suicide dive as he takes both Kendrick and Shelly down. Well, that's what I love about Austin Aries. We heard him say it recently on Impact Wrestling. He's about, hey, you know what? Five-star matches are great, but he's about a five-star bank account, and I get that. You get the, the oh. more you win, the more watch money you make. Watch this, Aries the cover. What I'm saying is the more, the more victories you get, the more money you're gonna make. Well, that's not gonna help you with that move, so I'm getting caught there. And caught by the knees of Shelly. Oh, and then oh, the oh. champ, Kendrick, comes back into play. Drop kick for Aries. And for that Fujiwara arm ball, oh, maybe, maybe not. And Sepa, Crossface, but Shelly just wrenching back, Mike. Cranking on the neck of Kendrick. And we're gonna see if Kendrick's gonna tap out. Could have a new X Division champion in Alex Shelley right, if trying, Kendrick taps yeah. here and fortunately gets the rope break. You see, he was trying to get to that bottom rope to utilize that to break the hold. Very tough hold to get out of. So good right ring presence by Brian Kendrick. Oh my God! Holy ab shot! Perfectly placed boot to the midsection of Kendrick. Looks oh. like he's going to go slice bread in the corner. Both these guys, they have a couple of slices of bread. Both use that move. They sure do. Who better to defend it than someone Ooh. like Kendrick, but no way to defend that dragon screw. What a leg whip by yeah. Shelly. Dragon screw, but right against the middle, uh, middle rope. And so his ropes are extremely tight. Good way to tear a hamstring. As Shelly goes high risk, he's cut off by Aries. Again, the talented legs and feet of Alex oh Shelley come into play. Now, I think, he, now he's got Aries out of the equation. Sure does, but and Brian Kendrick, he realized that. He knew that 
Shelly had some bad intentions on his mind. Exhibition champ having a hard time here. Again, first pin or submission. And Hardcore Justice will get that title and Shelly off the top. Yeah, went against the legs and splashed the legs of Kendrick. You don't see that often. Oh, watch this. We, we saw this on Impact Wrestling. Jeez. Is he gonna go spin with it now? He sets the figure oh. four, there it is. Spinning figure four, we saw oh it this past God. Thursday night. Ring positioning here. He's got Kendrick out in the middle. The excruciating pain that Brian Kendrick's gotta be in. That's a nasty hold to begin with. Wait, Shelly modified that figure four. Austin Aries saved himself there because if Kendrick would have tapped out, he would have crowned a new champion in Shelly. And Aries don't want that, obviously. And Aries back in and back on the offense. Oh. A hard hit match right here, yeah, man. Yeah. Kendrick taken out of the out of play and out to the floor. Wow. Aries goes bulldog. Plants Shelly. Rolls through. Beautiful. Bridging chin lock. That's a great submission with an arm trap. Very well done submission into that bridge by. Austin Aries, but watch the champ here. Austin down that bridge. Kick the back of the head of Austin Aries. Great submission, but you leave yourself wide open in a three-way match. Yeah, good point. A knee breaker, you can see that coming. Oh, right wow. into that back throw. Awesome. Nice suplex out of that knee breaker. Very quickly done. Just the way he puts together those multiple moves. All at once, so quick. Always impressed me when it comes to Austin Aries. He's just the athleticism is is amazing by this guy. Oh my God, Brian Kendrick, excellent timing to just catch Aries in the jaw. Whoa, talk about getting caught in the jaw. Kendrick back on top of the cover, leg hook, stacks him up and can only get two on Aries. Yeah, two in about three quarters. Yank. They aren't gonna get, I shouldn't say ain't, that's not really a word in the dictionary. But you're not gonna get that, <laughs> you're not gonna get that close. Gonna go slice bread out of the corner, but it's countered by Aries. Ooh, right in the spine. Champion Kendrick position in a bad way. Up on top, whoa, Aries whoa, whoa, gonna whoa. try and take him off Shelly, the top Shelly. and Shelly sneaks in from behind. Again, punch right to the back of the hamstring of Austin Aries. Oh, well, look at this. What the hell? Is, what, what's going to happen here? Oh, no, no, oh, no, oh, my oh, God. Oh, watch the slip. Kendrick looked like he wanted to get a sliced bread. He slipped off this, sweating a lot here. And that's what happens. No, he's trying to get innovative was the champ. And again, that knee breaker to the suplex this time on Shelly. Yeah, first for Kendrick from Austin Aries. And now he caught Shelly. Oh! How about the impact oh. behind that running drop kick? <laughs> like Kendrick got shot out of a cannon. Look at this guy, it's just all impact, pun intended, by Austin Aries, who I think might be the new exhibition champion right here tonight. Gonna go Brain Buster, and caught it. He's got it. This could be it, could He's be the new it. champion. Here's the lateral He's press, there's two, and oh, did he make it in time? Just barely. Kendrick for the save, now sliced bread. Oh. Oh. Aries stacked up with the sliced bread right on top of Shelly. And then Kendrick covers, and he gets the pin and keeps the title. Your winner and still X Division champion, Brian Kendrick. By the skin of Kendrick's teeth, that match could have went either way. That X Division title could have went to either one of these men here tonight. That was an extremely physical contest. What a way to kick off. Hardcore justice, man. That was a heavy hit in X Division match. Numbers were not on his side, but nonetheless, Brian Kendrick able to defeat two challengers. And as a result, Brian Kendrick is still the X Division champion. Are those your code of ethics? Let's take a look, Mike, at some of the just crazy action in this match. It's very physical. Again, every man for himself for the X Division <laughs> title. I mean, I. I I think we're on a kick off of the match. I had to give a, a little bit of a nod to Austin Aries. He had control of both men. This right here, this was that sliced bread on top of Shelly's stomach. Who's picking up the scraps? The X Division champion. Great job by Kendrick. Way to be heads up.
have to agree when it comes to Aries. But it's not about dominating the match for a certain percentage. It's about getting that first pin to win and retain the title for Brian Kendrick. The hell of a matchup, I'll tell you that. It is Mike Tanay and Taz, and we welcome you to this Hardcore Justice pay-per-view event that, ladies and gentlemen, will feature the showdown. The showdown for the World Heavyweight Championship when the icon Sting defends against the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. You know, Mike, when you're talking about Sting, you got to think about the unpredictability of the World Heavyweight Champion. Sting has been crazed and demented lately, so the number one contender, Kurt Angle, is going to have his hands full tonight. You know, Kurt Angle, he's made it very clear. He's not going to be satisfied until he gets a clean, non-interference win over Sting. Adds that to his resume. Well, if anybody knows Kurt Angle, and I know I know Kurt very well, when Kurt is, he's determined, and when he's focused on something, he's very difficult to beat. Therefore, we might crown a new World Heavyweight Champion tonight in Kurt Angle. Up next at Hardcore Justice, time for the knockouts. And to preview the match, we send it to the back. Jeremy Borash standing by with the knockout tag team champions, Tara, Miss Tessmacher. Take it, JB. Yet to come tonight here at Hardcore Justice, it's the rematch for the knockouts tag team championship. My guests at this time, Miss Tessmacher and Tara set to do battle against the former champions, Mexican America's Sarita and Rosita. And ladies, this situation has become very, very personal. Personal? You're damn right it's become personal. And let me remind you why. Do you two remember jumping us in the parking lot like two hood rats, two thugs from behind? And Sarita, you wanna blame me for disfiguring your face? You're damn right I did. Cause I did what I had to do to protect myself and my partner Tara. And let's not forget, they jumped us in the parking lot. We proved ourselves in the ring. We are true champions. And I guarantee tonight when we walk out of that ring, you can bring Hernandez, that freaking puppet, whoever you want. Because I guarantee we are going to leave that ring freaking champions. Come on, Brooke. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another championship match at Hardcore Justice. Knockout tag team titles at stake. The former champions, they get their rematch. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the Knockout Tag Team Championship. Introducing first, accompanied by Anarchia and Hernandez, the team of Rosita and Sarita, Mexican America. All about the United oh, Familia yeah. when it comes to Mexican America. <laughs> I'm thinking that mask, it's kind of something. It's a little bit odd. I have to say, it's kind of sexy, the mask, I gotta say. I'm gonna take a chip on a mask. Mask worn by Sarita as a result of the broken jaw and orbital bone. The parking lot brawl of the hands of Tara and Miss Tessmacher that they referenced in the pre-match interview. Yeah, Mexican America, man, they're no joke. Just one hell of a nasty fashion. And their opponents, the knockout tag team champions, Tara and Miss Tessmacher! Well, plenty of bad blood between these two knockout tag teams. We saw it recently on Impact Wrestling. That parking lot brawl led to the championship match where Tara, Miss Tessmacher, they defeated Mexican America, Serena and Rosini, to become the champions. Tonight, the return match. Yeah, this is just four hot chicks that just have nasty attitudes, and it's like you said, man, there's loads of bad blood here. That's Miss Powerfully Hot herself, Tara. Love that nickname. Yes. Oh, Miss Tessmacher. Yeah, Tara, she takes those glasses off. Wow. I like those glasses on, but anyway, look at this. It's like that Clark Kent thing, isn't it? Yeah, almost like that, but different. But look at this, referee. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, that nice. He's chucking out of here, up here, and Hernandez. Oh, I think that's a good call by the senior official. Importance of this match, the knockout tag team titles on the line. Let's clear the ringside area. Hernandez and Arkea, we will see them later tonight when they challenge Beer Money for the world tag team titles. 
to size those earrings that she did play well. She all might steal those earrings. Look at the size difference Ooh. between Tara and Rosita. Come on, Come on, Powerfully Tara. hot and a power hey, advantage. Yeah, I mean, a little red hot chili pepper right there, Rosita. Definitely giving up a lot of size to Tara and experience. And look at Rosita. Tagged herself out. I don't blame her. Second thoughts. Going to turn it over to Sarita. Wow. Big time back body drop by Tara. That's the mark of a veteran just taking her time, picking her spots, went to attack after the back drop, and she knew it was time to get Miss Tessmacher in, who going right after that face that, you know, Sarita said that, no, oh, Miss Tessmacher damaged, but I agree with Tessmacher. She was defending herself in that parking lot brawl. Running clothesline, takes down Rosita. Yeah, top wrist lock right there by Miss Tessmacher. Yeah, back to the basics and Tara tagging more herself in. More experienced Tara with the tag in and gonna try and exploit yeah. that size Ooh. engine advantage. And how about that? Right the back of Rosita's head. Right into the corner turnbuckles Ooh, wow, and nice. Tara goes to follow up in the corner. Rosita's got other ideas and comes flying out of the corner and snaps off the Hurricane Rana. It's Rosita, man. Wow. She's feisty. It's tough to do that Hurricane Rana with that kind of a size difference. I know. I used to do it all the time. Look at, Look at that boot right there by Tara in the face of Rosita. Rosita looks like she don't know what hit her. Look at that. Picked her opportunity to dump Tara out of the ring. Oh. Rosita was in the face of Miss Tessmacher, and that enabled Sarita to come from the opposite side and catch Tara. A weak and Tara roll. Oh, here back we go, here we go. Cover by Rosita leads to a two count. Well, obviously, uh, Sarita nailed Tara somehow, some way. This thing's getting a little crazy out here. Look at that, tagged herself in was Tessmacher. Tessmacher's legal. Back drop style suplex. On Rosita by Miss Tessmacher, running drop kick follows. Come on, baby! Oh, but right to a knee. Miss Tessmacher's prepared and ready, isn't she? Tessmacher is really just, he's really on point here in this match. I think there's something to say with Miss Tessmacher joining forces with the more experienced Tara. Uh, absolutely, it brings the best out of you. You're, you're half of the knockouts champions, uh, tag team champions. Oh, my God, you see. This mark is back. We just contorted off the double team move. Referee Earl Hebner on the other side of the ring, distracted by Tara. And now, this test mark are going to pay. Ooh, many shots by Rosita. Quick tags back into Sarita. Yeah, former champ. Look like they've got a game plan here nice. to cut off the ring. Just ripping around, snapping around. Hip toss into a arm ring of takedown, and Sarita just like a new uh, a new outfit on this next single. But she's got a shades of Candy Divine right there. Candy Divine, bring it to the 90s at least, would you? <laughs> Powerful slam. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, spring, oh, oh. An assist oh. from Sarita. Rosita stacked up on top of Tess Walker for two. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This test mark has got to try and get out of that corner because you can see the frequent tags by the two lovely ladies of Mexican America cutting that ring in half and keeping test marker in their corner. Mexican America looking to gain back the knockout tag team. Test whoa, whoa, whoa. Quick reversal here. Either way, a pin attempt by test marker. That excellent, was unique. Excellent counter by test marker. Tough to do that. There we go. Terrence legal. Oh. Right hand drops, Serena, another shot, oh, there's one for Rosita. A round kick, couple of round kicks, a third. Oh. Serena down after the kick. Tara gonna try and take her up, looks like a potential Widow's Peak that's cut off from behind by Rosita. Tell you what, you can just see how badly the knockout tag team champs want to keep their titles and how bad the challengers want to gain those titles. Get out. Challengers run together by the champs. Tara has a weakened Serena who slides oh, from behind. God, right on and the how shoulder. about that? 
the double underhook and then straight drop down. That's a good way to break somebody's shoulder off. I'm telling you, pop the rotator cuff portion of your shoulder. I'm telling you, the way Tara landed was nasty on the side of her body. Gonna try and get the fresh Miss Tessmacher in. But from outside, it's Rosita who pulls her down off the apron. Rosita's just she's all over this ring. She's everywhere. Rosita with the kick. Serena with the cover. That was close right there. We almost crowned new knockout no, tag team champions. Serena, she's still swiveling her hips around, dancing, getting all cocky. Here comes the Mexican-American double team on Terra. Just that rest right through. through the double clothesline and then extends both arms and drops both members of Mexican America. And now Rosita singled out by the much larger Tara. Chance to go Widow's oh, Peak again. Whoa, whoa. Instead, quick counter. Rosita, roll up. Serena with an assist from outside that I believe was broken up by Tessmacher. Sure was. Referee was looking at the shoulders, didn't see the outside interference. Uh-oh, maybe a rocket launcher. Not powerfully hot, gonna go power slam here. Oh my god. Oh! A five on one there. Look at Tara, she's locked in. She's got Rosita in her sights, but then ends up with a knee. And now double knees from Rosita out of the corner. Oh, you got you. Really, you gotta give a lot of credit to Rosita. She is, she's a, from a size standpoint, a lot whoa, 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 whoa. Miss Tessmacher able to pull Serena down off the apron just when it looked like Rosita was gonna make the tag. Now, gonna go Widow's Peak. And no Serena to help. Oh, oh my God, Tara that's nails it. her, Tara covers, gets two, gets three, and they keep the title. Your winners and still knockout tag team champions, Tara and Miss and there was just a boatload of intensity in that matchup between these four knockouts. In the end, Tara and Tessmacher retain those knockout titles. Was well, not easy. Good God, that was, that was some nasty stuff, Mike. Got it with Bray. Definitely. The intensity level brought up because of the importance of this match with the knockout tag team titles at stake. Champions retain, and this is how they did it. Oh, Widow's Peak, you can see the way Rosita's body, where she landed, nobody's kicking out of that. Hopefully she's okay. That was an ugly landing. Very powerful Widow's Peak by powerfully hot herself, Tara, and the straight up hot, Miss Tessmacher. That match was just fantastic. Tara, Miss Tessmacher, retain the knockouts titles as we send it to the back where JB is with the Pope. Up next here at the Hardcore Justice pay-per-view event, our first Bound for Glory series matchup of the night. Pope, you are going one-on-one -on -one with Devon, and I gotta ask you, your relationship with Devon, his kids, his family, what's, who are you tweeting? Are you texting, what are you doing? The Pope business, Daddy. Right now, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get a message out there. I've been trying to contact Devon, talking to the kids, and, and they're telling responding in the way that Pope, Pope that he responds right now. I'm sending out this tweet and maybe somebody will come across Devon and, and tell him that, you know, Pope's, Pope's feeling I look up to him, I respect him, and I want to do what's right tonight. You understand? So. Um, 40 characters. Yeah. So I don't know what the, I don't know what Devon's issue is. I don't know what the problem is. Kids looking up to a young brother that's trying to make a change in this world. That's all I want to do, man. I want to be positive influence on those kids. That's what I've been since I've come into their life. Uh, you know, the, 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 the mom, the kids, the grandma, all of them, they, look, they, they respect Pope, just like I respect Devon. And tonight, I want to convey that message, not just to Devon. I want to convey it to the world. I know this is a BFG match, Daddy, so when we get out there, I know things are going to be intense. I know Devon's coming out there with a purpose. So is Pope, though. And Pope's purpose is simple. I'm going to go out there, true Pope fashion. I'm going to go in that ring right here tonight live, and Pope's going to do the right thing. It's that simple.
And ladies and gentlemen, we take a look at the Bound for Glory Series leaderboard in anticipation of our next matchup. The Pope under the gun to add points and move up, while Devon, he could move into a first place tie with a 10 point submission win. And it is time, the first of two Bound for Glory Series matchups tonight at Hardcore Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Bound for Glory series analyst, the Blueprint, Matt Morgan. Well, tough luck for the Blueprint, Matt Morgan. On the sidelines, on the disabled list, with the torn pec, but a bonus for all of us, Taz, because just like on Impact Wrestling, the Blueprint is going to join us for special commentary on this Bound for Glory series bout. Big Matt, what's up, buddy? There you go, my friend. It was great to have Matt Morgan on Impact Wrestling. Always looking <laughs> forward to your observations, Matt, in this Bound for Glory series matchup. Hey, we got a good one here tonight. We have Pope and Devon in a Bound for Glory series match. You know what I mean? Two birds with one stone. These two can't stand each other, and there's points involved. Let's turn them loose. Yeah. Let's let them go. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a Bound for Glory series match. Introducing first from Harlem, New York, the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. What do you think about this relationship that the Pope referenced pre-match interview? We've seen it over the course of the past several months. The relationship that D'Angelo De Niro has had with Devon's sons, Devon's wife even said, hell, the grandmother thinks that I'm a positive influence. <laughs> I don't know if that's the truth or not. I don't know about that, but thank you. I, I, I hope it's like he had his phone in his hand or something, and that's Devon's sons, Terrence and Terrell. I don't blame Devon. I mean, you know, I don't yes. think Pope is really a pop, popular influence, and we've seen, <laughs> you know, we've seen Pope in action, let's be honest. You're absolutely right. Why don't Pope do one thing? Why does he concentrate about winning the Bound for Glory tournament tonight? Winning his match versus Devon and moving on to win the biggest prize in wrestling, the World Heavyweight title. I agree. And his opponent from New York, Devon! Winning the World Heavyweight title is the blueprint Matt Morgan just talked about. And this Bound for Glory series, that's what it's all about. As we head to No Surrender, next month on pay-per-view, we will have the top four point getters square off in two singles contests at No Surrender. From that point going forward, whoever has the most points after No Surrender gets a shot at the World Heavyweight Champion, the month of October, Bound for Glory, Philadelphia. You gotta be kidding me, you said the top four? I know yeah. Yeah. Story of my life, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Where yeah. was I when this happened, really? You were right. That's my pack down. Yep, you were right. terrific. <laughs> but again, it's the importance of this match right here, right now. Quit playing grab ass with Devon's family, move on, win this match and get a shot at the World so, Heavyweight Championship. So, Matt, I would assume, it's safe to assume that, oh, hold on a second here, uh, I'll get Pope to talk and I'll talk after he talks. How about that? Maybe he's not going to talk. Maybe he is going to talk. Bro, bro, Diva, listen. I respect you, man. I just made it clear. I just told the world. I just tweeted, as a matter of fact. I respect you. I look to you like you're my big brother. I expect a lot out of you, just like those kids expect a lot out of me, man. Look, look, a couple of weeks ago, I gave you seven points. I did that for a reason. Now, I'm all about this BFG thing, man. But my friendship, my relationship to you, and my relationship to those kids and their mom, it means a lot more, man. So I'm gonna do the same thing like I always done, man. You wanted that bad? I'm gonna prove to you that you mean more to me than us getting in here beating our brains out. Lay down? Are you kidding me? I'm sitting Hitler. out hurt while this guy's laying down in the middle of the ring. You have any idea what I do You're with this right opportunity? You're right about one thing. I'm going to get those seven points, but I'm going to take it out of your ass. Now get the... That a boy, T-Bar. Now get the hell up and give these people what they want to see. 
and that's whooping your ass right here in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I disagree with you, but I would have just grabbed the win. I would have took the shortcut, I'm telling you. I gotta give you my credit though. Look at it this way. Yeah. Through all this stuff that's going on with Pope and his, and his kids, where's where's Devon right now? But I'm not mistaken, he's in fourth place with 30 I, points. I, I don't think anybody expected Devon right? to be in all those years as a tag team wrestler right. to be sitting fourth. I mean, Devon got a huge victory this past week on Impact, which I called an upset on AJ Styles, right. which I thought was huge uh, for Devon. So. I like Devon's chances in this thing. I have to agree. It's just been amazing to see the transformation, well, really, really of both Bully Ray and Devon, so established as a tag team, and yet both of them so, so successful as singles competitors. It's a great example of doing whatever in the hell it takes to put yourself in an opportunity to win what? The World Heavyweight Championship. And that's what the mark of this Bound for Glory Series tournament is all about. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pope, he tried to pull Devon on top of him to pin him. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Don't play with me, Pope. You hear me? Don't play with me. Looks like Devon's trying to push some fight out of Pope. And at the same time, the frustration level here for Devon just going to reach that breaking point. Yep. You ready now? He's been able to show us so far. He's been able to put it under control and control those those emotions, like you said, Mike, and put it toward winning these matches. Bottom line, and moving on through the tournament. What's it about? If you're not in this industry to be the world heavyweight champion, you don't belong around here. Yeah. You don't. That's what it's about. Be the champion. Leave. The door's right there. Exactly. Out. Matt, you've made that clear for the past several years that you're just waiting for that opportunity. You thought this Bound for Glory series was tailor-made for you, the importance of wins and losses being yes. magnified. That's, That's why that injury has just got to be rough. Talk about frustrating for Devon. That would be frustrating for you yeah, to no, be no, here no, in the no. broadcast table. No idea, Mike. I've waited nine years for this opportunity, and here it was. I don't think it was custom-made for me this tournament. It was made for me. Period. But again, we're out here to call the action and talk about what we got going on right now. It's Devon and Pope. Oh, wow. wow. That was explosive right there by the Pope. Very impressive. Power move after the leapfrog, and now going to try and work on the arm of Devon. I think Devon got his belt rung there pretty good. <laughs> he got his belt rung, I'm telling you. Yeah, he did. You can tell when a guy gets up, man. man you know what I mean? When a guy gets rocked, you can tell by the way Devon got to a vertical base. Absolutely. Oh, he's got those fast hands, too, boy. Well sure does. Fast hands, fast mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Touche. <laughs> Bound for Glory series, it's seven points for a pinfall victory, ten points for a submission win. Yep. When we referenced it earlier, the fact that Devon, oh, 30 points, ten away from first place in the overall Bound for Glory series, and all of a sudden, the Pope's got, he's got his eye back on the ball, doesn't he? You know what, it was like this. Pope is where I would say Joe was last week. This is a must win, in my opinion, for Pope. He has 10 points, okay? Um, he got to win, yeah. We all know the Cinderella story come March Madness time for yeah. NCAA basketball. Who's to say Pope isn't Cinderella? We don't know that yet. But he needs to get his act together and stop playing down the middle of the ring and disrespecting our business and our world heavyweight championship. Because again, I would kill to be in this match right now. I was going to say, that's what must have just infuriated you to watch a guy play, as you said, grab ass with this thing here when yep. you're missing this opportunity due to an injury. Exactly. I'm not trying to screw you up. I'm okay, just saying yeah. I'd be hot You're doing a hell of a job, <laughs> You're right, though, Taz. No, I am. I'm joking around, but it, it really is. I've unfortunately been out with injuries on stuff, too. I get it. I, it's very frustrating. It's tough to explain to someone who's never happened to. Yep. Powerless. Look at this now. Devon went for a heavy duty close on, but followed up by that flying elbow. He's gonna go for the cover here. Devon on top. You gotta give that size and power advantage, obviously, to Devon. Yes. Here he comes. Look at this. Look at that. Diving Devon headbutt, up. lateral press, the cover, and another two count. Devon's gotten himself in great he shape. Sure has. He's no longer tag team, and he knows this match is all these matches from here on in are all about him. There's nobody watching his back. Yep, it's a different mindset. Oh, when you're used to being a tag team wrestler, yep. to your point. Yep. That's He's why the, the improved condition of both Devon and Bully Ray, I think, has been such a key oh, to their success post tag yep. team. Well, those sure. guys were tagging all those years. I tried to get them in good shape, but they didn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
quick piece of Pope right there. Sure was. Gonna this, move out of the way this, as this the is line hits the post. What's he got now? Yeah, chain in hand. This is where Pope's dangerous. Throw it out right now. Let's go. Get it back. Yeah. Terrence and Terrell. As the Pope hands them over the, the chain, and that's the opening for Diva. You gotta be kidding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not about for Boyd Series turning the match? Yeah, it is. It is? Yep. Yes, sir. What are they what are Whoa, whoa, watch this quick cover here. Could be seven points. This is smart right there for Devon to just neutralize and ground the Pope. I do feel like earlier in the match when Pope drilled Devon with that flying forearm, that, that Devon hasn't been himself. So that's this match. I think Devon's trying to regroup. the slam right into the pin for a near fall and after that palace then i think he might have been good he looks pretty good a little bit he looks pretty good let's go divana waste time seven points ten points let's get him get him on the board still to come tonight the top two men in terms of points in the bound for glory series crimson rvd they're going to square oh. off as well at that time the Pope got both boots on. Wow, how about yeah. that? Close line. That's bringing it right there, boys. You've been talking about Devon using the power game. Another story here with the Pope turning it loose. I think Devon right now is probably wishing Pope would lay down again for him. <laughs> Pope comes out and disrespects our world title. He's got his fancy chair for him there. Come on. Yeah, I guess he's trying to get some kind of motivation. But I hear you. Oh, what a backhand right there to Devon's face. That after the series of elbows to the top of the Ouch. head. And then full speed right across the head, right across the, the back of, of Devon. And all of a sudden, complexion of this match has turned totally in favor of D'Angelo De Niro, and the Pope's going to go high risk. Here he goes. Cross body, right into the cover. Here's two. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Pope got all of that high cross body block. Devon had the wherewithal to barely kick out. Oh! Big shoulder block by Devon. Heads to the corner, measuring D'Angelo De Niro, who slowly makes his way up to his feet. Here comes Devon charging in. Hope able to avoid oh. it, and then goes four up. Wow, a hell of an uppercut there, man. Oh, Devon hasn't. La La Land he is now. I'm telling you, knee pads are coming down. Might be express time. D-D-E, D'Angelo De Niro Express. And is he... Oh, what is the... Put on the brakes and got speared by Devon. You've got it. Cover, two. What? I don't know what the... I... Hope put the brakes on for a second. That little bit of hesitation was enough for Devon to capitalize. <sighs> Had him throttled, went for the choke slam. Hook floats over, roll up, stack up, and gets the pin and the victory wow. in the Bound for Glory series. Your winner, the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. Pope's back in this. Sure is. Pope played a head game, man. It's obvious. He played a head game for the head game for the top of this match. And I think it worked. He caught Devon there with a simple roll up. It's a very uh, another physical contest here. Slowly but surely, Pope is going to start climbing up this leaderboard. But it's up to him to win. Oh, he just did it. He ran himself mean? seven points. Yeah, seven, no, points seven, seven points. Now, Diva still showed no respect at all for the Pope. Like, yeah, maybe having second thoughts after making the eye contact with his sons. Well, it's obvious Devon wants to be a good role model for his sons, and I know Devon and his sons, and he is a good role model, so I guess he felt bad and wanted to do the right thing in front of his kids. Pope victorious in this Bound for Glory series matchup at Hardcore Justice as we take a look at the leaderboard and add seven to that 10 that he had earlier. The Pope moves into eighth place with 17 points. Matt Morgan, we thank you as we send it to JB with RVD. Thanks for having me, guys. Yet to come tonight here at Hardcore Justice, another matchup in the Bound for Glory series. It will be the undefeated Crimson.
Taking on my guest at this time, Rob Van Dam, and a lot of history between the two of you both. Last week on Impact, the two of you teamed up, going back about a month or so. Asbury Park, New Jersey, the two of you faced off in a Bound for Glory series matchup. Crimson getting the points that evening. However, tonight, your chance to avenge that loss. Tonight, your opportunity to be the, the first man to get a win over Crimson at the same time, becoming the new leader in the Bound for Glory series. I like the way that sounds, JB. Just like you said, tonight, RVD gets that number one spot. And guess what, Crimson? I show you, you're not undefeatable. And <laughs> you certainly aren't the whole F and show. We're up pretty cherry, man. Relax. I mean, I'm up next, bro. This ain't a tag match. Cherylin, what are you doing here? What, surprised to see me, JB? Listen, yeah. last month, Destination X, TNA had no problem whatsoever putting Rob and I in the ring against each other, trying to cause a little turmoil, a little friction, maybe, huh? Well, they should have no problem at all tonight with me being in Rob's corner to watch his back. Because we go back a long time, and nothing will break our bond. All right, listen, Crimson, he's got a lot riding on this match tonight. He's got an unbeaten streak. So, and he's not the competitor you are. Who knows what he'll resort to. So come on, I'm here to watch your back. I'm the eyes in the back of your head tonight. Let's go, come on, let's go. Whatever it is, let's do it. As you know, me and Angelina, we work as a team and that bond is forever. It's forever. And Mickey's gonna go high risk. Oh, Mickey, man, she knows how to fly. Oh, Angelina Love rolling in behind the back. Earl Hebner checking on the Ooh. condition of Winter. He never saw the interference of Angelina Love. And Winter wins the street fight because of Angelina Love. She just beat the knockout champion in this non-title street fight. That's got to put Winter near the top well, of the heap. I've already beaten Mickey James. I should be knockout's champion. And I'm going to make it official at Hardcore Justice. Beautiful Angelina in my corner. How could I possibly lose? Boy, you, you know about the loyalty between Angelina Love and Winter. Yeah, you can scream all you want because of hardcore justice. When I take that knockout title, it's going to belong to us. Nobody is ever going to get their grubby little fingers on our belt ever again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Angelina Love, what a shot. Angelina and Winter are like sisters. They laid it down, and will this be the sight that we have at the end of this match this Sunday? Will it be Winter with that Knockouts Championship on our shoulder? That's the question. Winter challenges hardcore country Mickey James for the Knockouts Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, up next at Hardcore Justice, time for another Knockouts title match. Singles competition. And we will preview and break down this match for you, this title bout, with this tale of the tape. Bizarre, yet effective pairing of Winter and Angelina Love. Could be the difference maker. Angelina can provide the challenger with a championship strategy. Angelina's been a five-time champ since achieving her dream, winning the knockout title. In the month of April at lockdown, Mickey James has turned back all challenges. And no question, Big match edge, overall experience advantage. It lies with the reigning champion, Mickey James, but with Winter and Angelina forming that lethal, that potent duo, numbers game could lead the winner's first ever singles title. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the knockout championship. Introducing first, accompanied by Angelina Love, Winter. Winter's just a difficult challenge because she's, like we talked about Sting tonight and the way Sting has been being unpredictable. I think you got to look at Winter in the same way, Mike, especially with the you know, beautiful Angelina Love in her corner. Who knows what's going to happen? This is the chance for Winter to finally become knockout champion here at Hardcore Justice. This great event brought to you by our friends at Direct Auto Insurance. We invite you to check out their website. DirectGeneral.com. What an opportunity this is for winter. Just a strange bird. That's what the English call ladies, by the way, bird. I learned that in the UK. And her opponent from Richmond, Virginia, the knockout champion, Mickey James. The hardcore country, baby. I'm a That big smile on the face of Mickey James. 
talked about winning the title back at lockdown. Then turned back to challenge the former champ, Madison Rain. Month of May at Sacrifice followed that up with a slam anniversary win in June over Angelina Love. But since then, Angelina and Winter have seen repeated attacks well, on Mickey James, even to the point of this past Thursday uh, at Impact yeah. Wrestling when Mickey was at the table. Absolutely, and Mickey James took a hell of a shot to the head by Winter with that title belt. I mean, hopefully she's 100%. Mickey seems to be. I mean, the last we've seen, I mean, Winter and Angelina both left Mickey laid out right on the stage here. Last Thursday at Impact Wrestling. Total blindside. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what's about right there to knock out title. Well, the knockout tag team champions certainly leave it all in the ring earlier tonight in their championship match, and now title in terms of singles competitors. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, oh, the distraction from outside by Angelina. We talked about it earlier, previewing this in terms of the numbers game, having Angelina Love at ringside and winner's corner, a huge advantage. Yeah, I tell you what, Mickey James, she's got to try to discipline herself, which is not gonna be easy to do, to stay focused on Winter. Don't even, don't even acknowledge or look out. Oh, Greg, it's screwed out. Don't even look at Angelina on the, on the outside. Well, right, from the, right from the start, we see that the champion, Mickey James, is going to work on the lower body, work on the legs of the challenger, Winter. We can hear the pain that Winter is in. Look at that. Mickey's bending her up. Uh, I didn't expect that strategy, but I liked it by the knockout champ going right after her leg. Challenger outside regrouping with Angelina as well, and when Mickey charged in, Winter caught her with the boot. Nice little standing switch right there by Winter. Looked like she went for a potential roll-up out of the corner, but Mickey James had hooked the ropes. Whoa, a little slippity do there. Yeah, shoulder block slide in for the pin and a two count. Winter's got those long legs right there, which is a lot of leg to work on. If I was Mickey, man, I'll tell you, I think I'd go back to one of those legs and try and build some uh, offense and beat down on a leg. It's a perfect slippity. target, right? Yeah, that's what I think. Well, you mentioned it right at the opening bell, Taz. The fact that Mickey James needs to, to really stay focused here on the task at hand. Well, I mean, referee Earl Hebner, I think it might get to a point, just if I'm Earl Hebner, so I, I'm glad I'm not, but if I was, I would uh, I would definitely think about getting Angelina out of here and sending her back to the locker room area. Drop kick to the knee, takes down the challenger, and then the drop kick followed by Mickey right into the face, and another pin attempt and another two count. But smart by Winter to get out of the ring, kind of regroup. Mickey, being smart also, not chasing after her, but she know it would be a two-on-one situation out there anyway. A little strategy session between Winter and Angelina, as we talked about, the five-time former knockout champion, Angelina Love, can certainly offer that advice when it comes to title match strategy and game plan. Uh, the oldest trick in the book didn't work for Angelina there. Oh, that worked. Yeah, that yeah. sure did. Steel post. Meet the face of Mickey James, courtesy of Winter. Well, over the steel barricade. Yeah, she landed and did you hard. hear the thud on the concrete? That's the thing about our knockouts. They're not just sexy and, and beautiful and, and stuff like that. They're tough as hell, man. You can just see Mickey James is not a large girl. I mean, she just landed on cement. Those chicks would be down and out and be done if that happened to them. A little Winter, she's trying to, you know, she's content for getting herself a count out victory. Champ trying to clear the cobwebs and make her way back over the guardrail. But it's a weakened knockout champion, Mickey James. Oh, oh even more weakened now. Running a kick by Angelina. I've run a punting like kick. Punting, I say, right in the the uh, abdomen area. Challenger rolls. The champ back in. Gonna go for the quick cover. And now this is the opportunity 
that Winter needs. And she's, you see those knees right into the rib cage of Nikki James. Now putting the arms of Nikki James, almost just a, a neutralizing type hold here. Champ back up to her feet. Gonna go with a series of elbows. One way to escape. Oh, and put, put a little jackknife, little jackknife, or jackie knife, ladies. Oh, and right after the pin attempt, winner back up to her feet and drops Mickey James with the clothesline and a blatant choke right in front of the referee. Just trying to wear down. Winter's just wearing down Mickey James. Mickey's just been a load of pain after landing over that guardrail on the cement in the front row. Not able to uh, recover. Challenger stays in control over the knee with the backbreaker and now just has her draped across well, her own knee. Again, the strategy, Mike, across the ribcage area, lower back, that whole midsection is just being bent up by Winter, the challenger. Right now, the knockout champ is in uh, dire straits here, trying to fight back. Not the only option there was to use the free leg and the free knee. A couple of shots with the knee momentarily turns Mickey loose, but then she's shot off into the corner. And Winter gonna just continue to follow up that offense, putting the boots to Mickey in the corner. I think if uh, if Winter just really got a little systematic here and kind of picked the spots, try not to rush into anything with a veteran like Mickey James. That's what happens wow. when you do that. Head scissors take over by the champ. No luck with the clothesline for Winter, but then Mickey back, series of clotheslines. Back elbow right on target. This is what you don't want. You don't want Mickey to stop rolling downhill on you, but she will take you out. Winter right now with a nice tip up right there by Miss Hardcore Country herself. Followed a nice face plant. Mickey headed to the top. Here she comes. Oh! Fez press off the top. Tell you what, Mickey's got Winter right where she wants her, and referee's checking on Winter. Whoa, 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 whoa. You saw that. Angelina. The, the challenger put the referee over. Angelina Love slides in, which she calls that the breakup, bitch. You're and not she kidding. just dropped. Mickey James, Winter gonna go for the cover here. Here's pin, here's two, and. Oh! Wow. That was extremely close. And you can see how livid, how upset, how angry Winter is. She thought she had the win. Mickey fighting off. Winter with elbows to the side of the head. Slides in, rolls her up. Back bridge. She's got him. Just two. I thought that was going to be the three count as well. Flurry of offense from Winter in the corner on Mickey James. Yeah, Mickey James, I mean, she, she had that opening to gain the victory. But Winter able to recover and get back on top. Well, our live audience here in the impact zone is torn, torn between two knockouts. Free leg of Mickey with the kick out of the corner. Here she goes. Oh. Tornado DDT. Winner spiked right on her head, but I think the momentum of the move caused Winner to slide well, out to the floor. That definitely. And again, interference here from Angelina Love. Oh, not another breaker, bitch. Wait a minute. Oh! Drop down. Hangman, a hang woman style neck breaker from Mickey James to the interfering Angelina Love. Yeah, referee all heaven never even. I never even realized that Angelina was here ever interfering in the match. He was out here checking on Winter. And now finally, Angelina taken out of play and tries to get back in again. Oh, what the hell was that? No. Like a mist? Did she spit right in the eyes of Mickey James and Winter covers and she oh. just got the pin and she just won the knockout title. Your winner and new knockout champion, Winter! What the hell was that? Oh my God! Face just covered. Repeated interference.
defense on the part of Angelina Long leads to the opening and the opportunity. And Winter does it as she becomes knockout champion for the first time. But there's the proof. There's the evidence. Oh, yeah, we all have this looking right at it. All that, all that stuff all over the face of, of Nikki Kings. That must burn or something. She's, you can see the pain that the Nikki James is in. At the same time, thinking that she's no longer the knockout champion. Yeah, she says she can't see. What's wrong? What's wrong? Where is it? Where is it? Impact Wrestling trainers to check on this situation. We're going to try and stay on top of this and keep you updated on Mickey James' condition. As we said it to the back in JV, she said she couldn't see. Thank you very much, guys. And while we do have a new Knockouts champion earlier tonight, Brian Kendrick successful in defending your X Division championship in our opening contest. Congratulations, you are still the X Division champion. Well, thank you very much, Jimmy DeBorash. I, uh, I really appreciate that. It was a hard fought contest. I hope Alex Shelley's doing well. Uh, yeah, I beat two of the absolute best the X Division in the world has to offer right now. I'm in the middle of This is why I hate this guy, man. It's stuff like this. You know, for weeks, you guys have been coming out here with your Girl Scouts Code of Honor and Ethics talking about don't be cheating. But what happened tonight? The match wasn't a three-way. It was Brian Kendrick and Alex Shelley versus Austin Aries. Two-on-one handicap match. That whole match, you guys were double-teaming me. Two-on-one. And you know what? At the end of the day, you still couldn't beat me. You didn't beat me. I beat you. But I beat you. I, I did beat but you. But you didn't pin me. No, you didn't no, pin me. I beat you. No, no, you beat Alex Shelley. You didn't beat me. Yeah, but we're talking semantics here. This okay. is a question of semantics. I, I beat Semantics. You. I don't care what religion you're talking here. I'm talking this. Until you beat me one on one, you can't call yourself a real champion. I want to match with you anytime, any place. You just name it. But right now, here's a towel. Go take a shower. You look like you're homeless. This is exactly why I hate this. And until you beat me, you're not the real X Division champion. <laughs> I'm the X Division champion. <laughs>
contrast in size when it comes to this matchup of number one versus number two well, in the and series. And experience, Mike. Obviously, Van Dam has a lot more experience than Crimson. Right there, you see how quick Van Dam went to that leg to chop down that big giant redwood known as Crimson. Wow, look how quick this guy is now. With the roll of thunder, nobody there. Goes for a quick hit. Going for that seven points. 40 points for Crimson going into this match. 35 for RVD in the number two spot. And off the suplex, another pin attempt. Another two count for Crimson. Tell you, being undefeated, man, it's, you're a mauled man, boy. Big, big target on that big back of Crimson. Not only is this a BFG series match, but that undefeated streak is huge. Off whoa, the whoa. slam, another pin, another two count. Van Dam is a ultra competitive man. I'm telling you that right now. So, Van Dam, you know he wants to just de defeat Crimson to get rid of that undefeated uh, heel he's got going on. Oh! Hey, foot meat face. <laughs> wow, great spin kick. There's another one. <laughs> Springing off the middle rope. RBD connects. Rob Van Dam positioned for that roll of thunder. Positioned him and caught it. Perfectly. Well, missed it before. Jerry Lynn. That looks gonna... on approvingly as RBD goes for the cover. Jerry, Jerry Lynn's in approval. Okay, great. And damn, right there, grabbing at his throat, and Crimson just waiting to attack. Is that cravat? Oh, and those knees. We've seen this out of Crimson a lot. Yeah, and then punctuates it with the spinning neck breaker. Off the strikes and the neck breaker. Here's another pin attempt. And opening minutes of this match, and Crimson has gone for like three, four pin attempts. You've got to appreciate that. Well, you, you know, I would assume, and in my opinion, the longer this match goes on, the more it's in favor of Van Dam. And I think Crimson realizes that. Crimson's the larger man, and like you said, he has less experience. Nice, nice high T-bone suplex right there. That's right, Mike. Don't there it is. Another on. pin. I okay, that right out of the Taz playbook. No, hey, I'm not saying nothing. I'm, yeah, just, right. I'm just saying. But uh, and Crimson now not going to let Van Dam waste wow. any time. Uh, Van Dam able to. That ridiculous how quick that was. That one fluid well, motion right up to the apron. Talk about direct auto insurance. How about direct kick to the face? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Crimson might need some auto insurance. Might need body insurance <laughs> if he gets done. Both direct. <laughs> Crimson going to take it out to the streets here, pulling Van Dam out to the floor and dropped him with the clothesline. A weakened Van Dam rolled in by Crimson. Going to go for the seven points and another pin. Still yeah, life Dam, left in Van Dam. Van Dam's rock, Mike, and I've competed against Rob a lot, and, and the thing with Rob is he's just got so much resiliency. It's very, very tough. To, to get a win on him because he could sustain so much punishment. I mean, you could go out there and ask Jerry Lynn that. Jerry knows that better than anybody. And I'll tell you what, though, Crimson can dish out punishment. A lot of it. How about the power behind that shot into the corner? So much that Crimson drops to a knee but goes right back on top for another pin. Again, showing the importance of the Bound for Glory series when it comes to wins and losses. So many pin attempts by Crimson because he realizes that seven points would keep him in the first place spot and also keep the undefeated streak intact. Sure, and he's forcing Van Dam to exert more energy by you know, making him kick out and kick out and kick out, which is tough to do, it wears you down. And I like the point you made about the immediacy of the situation for Crimson. Yep. Realize, get the early win. Don't prolong oh. it and almost had it. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying, the longer it goes on, but I was thinking it might be uh, in, in Van Dam's favor, but we've seen Crimson just really keep the pressure on Rob. He keeps bringing his offense to Van Dam and controlling that head right there of Rob Van Dam. Well, that's what that cravat is really all about. It's all about control, and at the same time, it opens up the possibility that Crimson can use those powerful knees. He's got those long limbs, those long legs, those Crimson. Van Dam knows there's probably a knee coming, so he got a couple of body shots. Oh, man. How do you defend that? 
Oh, well, he did. He blocked him with his jaw. I never saw it coming. <laughs> oh, there's a split leg moonsault oh, here. He caught him. Pin. Here we go. One, two. Impressive kick out by the undefeated Crimson. That was that. I mean, that, that split legged moonsault hit its mark by Rob. You might be going five star here, Mike. Oh, maybe not. Crimson's up. Instead, went for that thrust kick off the top that Crimson avoided. Swing and a miss with the clothesline by Crimson, but quickly gonna take Van Dam and power oh. him over. And here we go. Hooks the leg. Got him. And it looks like Rob was out like a lifer. Able to kick out, but not much movement by Van Dam now on bottom. Crimson motions that it's time to finish off Van Dam once and for all. A weakened RVD sent off into the ropes. Oh, from in tight. He might have been going for that red sky, Mike. That's what it looked like. Crimson might have been going for that red sky, and it was an excellent, yeah, excellent counter by Rob Van Dam. Especially the condition of Van Dam to be able to just react like that and, and come up with the kick and take what looked to be a potential match ending Red Sky. Boom! Wow. Awesome flexibility by Rob Van Dam. Pinpoint accuracy in the face and head. Oh, oh, oh. you talked about five star earlier. Could this be it? Positioned up on top. Gonna fly, baby. Caught. Wow. Five star frog splash off the top by Van Dam. We might witness the first loss in Crimson's career is about to come possibly here. Here it comes. Here's one. Here's Got two. Him. Wow. Oh, man. Boy, you do not see that very often. Somebody that's able to kick out of the RVD five-star frog splash. Let's point out that Geraldine's doing a hell of a job watching Rob's back. Crimson down. Van Dam trying to regroup. Now Van Dam is second thoughts. It was almost as if he might have been headed back to the top for another frog splash. Yeah, that's a mark of a veteran right there and a former world champion in Van Dam. Oh. He realized that the positioning that Crimson was in was not conducive to what he wanted to do. Power of Crimson sends Van Dam into the corner. But Rob able to get the boot up. Oh, oh man, with a spear. Explosive wow. leads to the pin. This could be it. I'll tell you what, that spear was hardcore, boy, because you saw Van Dam's neck and head like whiplash. It was very impressive. RVD, RVD. Jerry Lynn, the opponent, back in Destination X for RVD, but at ringside tonight to watch his back in the Bound for Glory series. Crimson went for the slam. Van Dam able to float over, missed the kick. There it is. There oh. it is, is right. The right, right in the back of the head. Here's two. Jerry Lynn. Oh, Jerry Lynn said he was going to. No, that's what he meant. He... Oh, well, Crimson was about to get the victory there. Is Jackson James is called for the bell, raising the hand. Your winner by disqualification, Crimson. Well, Geraldine got, got involved, and I don't think that's what Van Dam thought. Well, uh, uh, Jerry meant by watching his back and stuff like that. And think about it. cost Rob the match. But not only cost him the match, but he cost him 10 points because of the disqualification. So Crimson picks up three for the disqualification victory, but at the same time, Van Dam is a minus 10. I'm just trying to help. I'm just watching your back. What's in my back? Yeah, 
Ralph saying he just tried to help, but he made a mistake. I mean, I, I don't understand. That, that was a pretty, in my opinion, a pretty blatant mistake. I don't know. I mean, we, we heard Jerry Lynn apologize to RVD, but it's a little late to apologize yeah. when you drop 10 points yeah. in the Battle for Glory series. Been in the business about 500 years. How do you make a mistake like that? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I what you did? Up, I'm sorry, all right? You messed up, and I got to pay you. Yeah, he did mess up. You're right, RVD, and as a result, Crimson, the disqualification win, picks up three points, stays in first place, but RVD, minus 10, drops all the way from number two down to the number five slot. To JB, standing by with Mr. Anderson. I'm here backstage at Hardcore Justice with the newest member of Immortal, Mr. Anderson. And although you say you joined Immortal for all the right reasons, it appears as though there are several members who uh, made this. <laughs> Ooh, hold your tongue, insolent fool. Not several members, one member. One member's got a freaking problem with me. Okay? Look at, look at Immortal. Stallions. Box. We've got legends, future legends. They're just missing that one piece. You know what that one piece was? They were just, they were missing something. That grade A, genuine, authentic, Asshole. That's where I come into play, right? Huh? Mm. All right, right? Mm. Yeah. Now, my father told me at a very, very young age that there are two types of assholes in the world. There's the asshole that shits all over everybody, that pushes people around, that take what they feel belongs to them, that tells it like it is, but at the end of the day is willing to, you know, help a guy out if he needs it. The gentleman asshole, if you will. And then there's the type that just blows a bunch of hot air. And I, through the process of elimination, have deduced that that asshole is Bully Ray. Now, bully, there are not, an, there's not enough room for two assholes in a mortal. I don't even think that's scientifically possible. You know, I, I made asshole a cool thing, okay? Everybody wants to be an asshole. It's cool, it's hip, it's fun. But bully, you give asshole a bad name. Bad name! down to the ring. If that's the case, they consider this an RSVP. These two warring factions, they have the chance to settle things this Sunday at Hardcore Justice, Fortune versus Immortal. Fortune battles Immortal in six-man tag team mayhem. The bowling contest scheduled for one fall is a six-man tag match. Introducing first the team of Scott Steiner, Gunner, and the Abyss, Immortal! Like that description at the end of the video package, six-man tag team mayhem awaits us as the two groups, Fortune and Immortal, about to go head-to-head. -head. Yeah, we well, definitely you can see here the massive size of these three members of Immortal. That might be the factor that hurts Fortune. Give up some body weight here to these men. Look at the size of Stein's arms. 
biceps even bigger than yours, Mike. Yeah, this is going to be all about power when it comes to this immortal threesome become a Hump Scott Steiner. Blue chipper gunner, as you see right there. Factor in 6'8", 350 of the monster abyss. This is going to be an uphill struggle when it comes to the power game for Fortune. Well, Fortune can act like a Ferrari against three tanks. They might get the Duke. Fortune 4. And their opponents, the team of Christopher Daniels, Kazarian, and AJ Styles. Fortune! Intriguing matchup tonight at Hardcore Justice. This event brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance. Go to directgeneral.com for a free quote as we see Style, Daniel, Kazarian. Hands in the air representing Fortune. About to go to war with the ball. Oh, Mike, I mean, recently, let's be honest here. AJ and Daniel's left friendship has kind of had some rough waters out uh, as of late. We saw the two compete at Destination X. AJ Styles victorious one month ago on pay-per-view. And then a little friction as of late on Impact Wrestling, did your reference. Yeah, well, a little distraction in the Berkeley. In my opinion, by Daniels, cost AJ a match this best first in Impact Wrestling against Evo. So they're going to have to be on the same page no, not if they're going to compete against the likes of Immortal. Oh, Immortal members making some friends with our fan base. A lot of trash talk is going on right now. And not surprisingly, hey, the leader this. of the trash talking is Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. Yeah, Scott Steiner Steiner's always yelling at someone, arguing somebody. Not, that's not just here on oh, television. Right. You're not kidding. <laughs> you could be, could, it could be in the impact zone. It could be in a hotel. hotel. You, you, you just never know when Big Papa Pump is going to erupt. Speaking from first-hand experience, I know that. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> nice, nice goal behind right there by Gunner on Kazarian. Kazarian trying to break the grip. Go behind with that hammer lock by Kazarian. And nicely oh, done to really nice. avoid the elbow, and then at the same time, <laughs> come at him with that quick flying head scissors. He had the head scissors while he had a hammer lock. Shows the athleticism of Kazarian, floats right into that front face lock. Which is a nasty hold, a basic hold, which is nasty. Tried to reverse out of that, did Kazarian, I'm sorry, did uh, Gunner. Mr. Intensity Gunner. Mr. Intensity almost got himself tapped out by hitting the mat from anger. He's up to the referee and say tap. Seen that happen. Kazarian elevated overhead. Gunner tries to get momentum off the ropes. Oh wow! It turns around into the drop kick. Kazarian quick in. There's some momentum behind that drop kick by Kazarian. You see that uh, Gunner right there getting big box pop a pump right now, but Gunner was about to blow a pump and lose his cool and talk about losing his cool. That man right there, well, he's pretty good at that. Got Scott Steiner. What you see on Impact Wrestling and pay-per-views, that's what Scott Steiner is. Now, Steiner might look like a really nice guy and stuff, but he's really not. I don't know that I've ever heard him describe like that. <laughs> Scott Steiner, really nice guy. How about this crucifix style? Quick drop down. Steiner's shoulders are for two. Steiner's shoulder brittle is too big that they even get crucified in a crucifix. I like it. A shoulder brittle. It's called yeah. AJ Styles now. Talk about quick hitting and intensity. That's AJ. And he gets overpowered into the corner by Steiner, and then there's the knee. Right at the belt liner, possibly just below. Chop followed up by a big overhand right and back to the chop. You don't want to let AJ stop building some momentum on you. Got to give that definitely a quickness advantage to AJ Styles in regards to Steiner. Steiner's built for power. 
teamwork from Styles and Daniels ah. as they go high low with the double team that takes down Steiner. Daniels drops down into the cover for two. Well, I don't know if Daniels and AJ didn't handshake like that. He might have got the win, but I guess they want to build that friendship, that chemistry between AJ and uh, Daniels. I want to make sure they're both on the same page. It looks like they were. Steiner with the slam on Daniels and then cuts off the ability of Daniels to get to the corner for a tag. That just seconds after he had tagged in Abyss. Well, the name of this paper view is Hardcore Justice. If there's anybody who's hardcore, it's definitely the Monster Abyss. Those palm strikes right there by Daniels. Oh, man, too much size. He's trying to shoot across. Daniels quickly out to the apron. Goes so springboard and on the way down. Uh, he, he lost his balance. But it was a good reaction and a good improv type move to be able to catch Abyss with the kick. It sure worked. It definitely worked by Daniels. But AJ going flying with the springboard. <laughs> not kidding. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kazarian springboard into the drop kick. Somebody said something about springboards. Springboard for everybody. Not surprisingly, Fortune turns it in their favor with this quick hit and run style offense. That's what they need against the, the big three individuals representing Immortal. I agree, Mike, and that's that's where Fortune, they're intelligent. Watch this, watch this. That's where Fortune, they're very intelligent competitors, and they realize that they're gonna utilize their quickness and athleticism against these three big bulls. What about big bulls, look at this. Wow, oh my God. Daniels caught in mid-move and planted with authority by the monster. Steiner outside sends Daniels into the steel barricade. Well, Kazarian was coming around to help, it looked like, but referee Brian Hemner stopped Kazarian. Watch out, watch out. The referee Brian Hemner, he, he needs some eyes in the back of his head or something. Tough situation for an official in this six-man tag team matchup is now Gunner Legal against a weakened Daniels and weakened courtesy of Big Papa Pump outside. Oh, grounded him too right here. You see Gunner with that rear, rear chin lock right there. Right across the face and cheek and the head of Daniels grounding the high fly. Vertical base is step one. Series of elbows tries to get out of the grip of Gunner, but as Daniels does, he's dropped right into the suplex and Gunner covers for two. Yeah, this is what you don't want now for Daniels. You don't want to be caught in that corner of the ring. Well, that is no man's land, isn't it? I'm telling you, man, big time. You saw how Daniels quickly went to a neutral corner. Anything to try and escape. Well, Daniels is a veteran. Right here, look at that. That arm trap. Belly to belly cover, two count. With that back step into that vintage belly to belly suplex, collegiate style. Right there by Scott Steiner from All America at the University of Michigan. Abyss is now legal as referee Brian Hebner tries to get Scott Steiner out of this matchup. And now Abyss takes a week and Daniels tosses him into the corner. And Avoid Ooh. all these immortal members. Gunner from outside tries to get involved. Instead, Daniels caught choke slam attempt by Abyss, but able to roll through and tag in Kazarian. Well, that's exactly what Fortune needed there. They needed Daniels out of that. He was getting, he was a bad wow, 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 wow. God. <laughs> Kazarian Whoa. snaps off the hurricane run on Abyss. Shots for Gunner. There's one for Steiner. And here he comes springing back with a jumping back elbow. And the pace picked up in a huge way. Springboard, leg right drop. drop. Yeah, beautifully done. Is this done. enough? Might be, but Gunner's gonna break it up before three. Excellent, excellent job right there by Gunner to break that thing up. And I'll tell you what, I think Abyss was gonna lose that match right there. Kazarian drops down, Gunner hits the floor. And from outside, Kazarian off the shoulder block, right in off the back of Abyss, here he comes. Wow. God. DDT on the much bigger Abyss. 
And of all three men, I didn't think a bit a bitch was gonna get bounced around by Fortune like this, but he's been. Look at this! Oh, Kazarian dives as AJ pulls down the top rope. What's the teamwork right there? They don't remember still more. They didn't try to help a bitch, but now they are. But this thing's breaking down. It's like a street fight here. You almost like Gunnar and Steiner let a bitch take the brunt of that dive. Oh, did. As this, well, six man tag team mayhem, as it was described earlier, and that's exactly what this is. Steiner looks like he's got something on his mind. I don't know what he's. Abyss, you're right. He got blasted with that dive by Kazarian, and now. Uh -oh. Steiner in the nick of time, able to pull Kazarian down, and he lands face first on the edge of the ring. Look at this now. Looks like members of Amor are pulling out a table. Referee Brian Hebner. Gonna come out on the floor here because the table's brought into play. I feel might consider throwing this match out. This thing is out of control. Oh, referee Brian never do the right thing. Get in the ring, deal with these two men that are in the ring. See the intimidation tactics of Abyss as the referee bails out, and now Abyss turns his attention back to Kazarian. Those clubbing blows by the monster abyss. Push-ups. Steiner's style there. And now Kazarian in trouble. Gunner outside. Steiner's legal. And with Kazarian down, you see that Gunner's now brought in. Gunner the legal man. Gunner has Kazarian well in a position where he wanted him. Down in the corner. Look at that. You see Gunner trying to frustrate. AJ Styles and Daniels on the apron. Mocked him with that tag, didn't he? And I like that strategy. Just watch this suplex pin. This guy, Gunner, man, he's got a winner's attitude. He's got a kill or be killed instinct. Still fight left in fortune in the form of Kazarian. But Gunner has him that time with the elbow. Well, never more important here for Fortune than to get Kazarian out oh, yeah, they, they, and get either AJ or Daniels in. You're right, Mike. They got to get Kazarian out of harm's way, but there's nothing that AJ and Daniels can do until Kazarian gets over there and makes that tag. Look at these body shots by the monster of this. Crippling body blows. And Kazarian in the corner, able to get the boot up. Abyss coming in. Abyss charges right back at him again. How about that? Slingshot in. DDT down. And Kazarian just needs to roll just a couple of feet to the corner. I don't think Kazarian knows where he is, but you're right. Good point. Kazarian just got to reach across. AJ's right near him. And there it is. Tag to AJ Styles up the back no. of Abyss. Shot for Steiner. Ooh. Phenomenal one turning it loose. Hammerlock on Gunner. And then Hammerlock suplex. Look at just AJ Styles, man. When he hits, he attacks. Just loaded with explosiveness. All offense from AJ, who's taken out to the apron by Abyss. Styles fights back, measures, here he goes, gonna go springboard again, right into the crossbody. Pin two. Power of Abyss to kick out. Interference by Steiner at the same time to prevent the three count. 
Right there, Daniels taking control of Steiner now. Talking about getting control. Look, whoa, AJ. Whoa. No, he's too big, Styles man. Styles clash on, on Abyss. Too big. Uh-oh. Got goozled. AJ got goozled. But instead, AJ counters a mid-move for a roll-up and a two-count. Thought he was going to get him there. Fortune would have got the win. Oh, man, what a Pele. Abyss. Dropped down by Styles, who goes for the cover and Gunner in. Wow. Azarian just flew across the ring right into Gunner. Running knee by Gunner to the chest and face of Kazarian. Some hard hitting action in this thing, man. Daniels moves out of the way of the Gunner knee, takes him down with the STO, and then springs back. Right into the moonsault. Awesome. Awesome. Bell oh, right oh. in your face. Downward from oh. Steiner. Wow. AJ with the kick to the back of the head. A big pop of pump. Oh. A round kick right to the hamstring. That definitely lowered the body level, that vertical height that Abyss has. Now what's AJ gonna do? High risk again. Oh! oh. Gunner from outside and, oh man. Timing of Gunner was awesome right there. And AJ landed hard right, right on his, you know what, man, badly. Uh -oh. And Kazarian uh -oh. in with shot after shot to Abyss. Yeah, the referee's trying to stop Kazarian with this awesome, this attack, but look at this, Mike. Gunner. Takes AJ. Oh my God, what the hell are they going to do here? Out here? Daniel saves AJ at the last second. Gets caught by the kick. Oh! God! The impact of Gunner driving Daniels right through the table. Referee didn't see that. Well, look like uh, Daniels definitely saved AJ in a huge way there. Look at this. Oh, my God! Springs into the Pele. Wow, that was unique. Cover. Two, three, and he got it. Your winner, Fortune. I don't think he springs to a Pele. Does he look like a moonsault just kicks him? Maybe half and half. It looked like a Pele to me. Whatever it was, it got Fortune the victory. But I think you might be right in regards to the Pele, but they better check on Daniels. He got driven hard through that table. Almost seemed like he took a bullet right there for AJ. Great Good teamwork. Point. Yeah, yeah, great teamwork, though. Excellent victory for Fortune. This what it looked like AJ was going to end up as the individual going through the table. Hell of a match, Mike. Hell of a match. You said it. Daniels takes the bullet for Styles, and that enables the phenomenal one to get the pin, which leads to the Fortune victory in the six man tag over a I wasn't going to let him put you through that, brother. Oh, they get rid of this now, Steiner. Look, if you think about it, they get all over Abyss here. Ever since Abyss lost the X Division title back in Destination X, all the members of Immortal, from the top all the way down, from Hogan and Bishop, they have been questioning Abyss about losing that championship. And you see that Steiner and Gunner not happy with the monster. Once AJ got tagged in, he just tore it up, Mike, in a huge way. But that cross body looked like a three count for sure. But Abyss kicked out and Steiner uh, interfered, and this is the beginning of the end. This is where we saw Daniels take that bullet, as you said. I think you're right, Mike. That was a springboard into like a super Pele, I guess. <laughs> that was enough to get the win, and we saw Gunner and Steiner. Not happy with the monster Abyss. Yeah, they leave, by his low they leave their immortal partner, Abyss. And speaking of immortal, we're going to send it to Jeremy Borash with Immortal's Bully Ray. Well, it certainly has been an interesting night for Immortal thus far. And coming up next, we are going to see a matchup between 
Mr. Anderson and my guest at this time. Bully Ray, we heard some comments made earlier tonight by your opponent, Mr. Anderson. His thoughts, and certainly I'm curious now to hear yours. So Anderson said that there's only room in a mortal for one asshole. I agree with him. This asshole, the biggest, the baddest, the roughest, toughest asshole on the block in a mortal and in the wrestling business. You see, everybody makes mistakes in life. Hell, I made a mistake by carrying that sack of crap Devon around for 15 years. Your mother and father made a mistake when they decided to have you. Even Hogan and Bischoff can make mistakes. And the biggest mistake that they made, allowing Ken Anderson into a mortal. I'm gonna right the wrong. I'm gonna change the mistake for them. I'm gonna beat Anderson out of a mortal. Beat him down really bad right here, right now. Anderson, so help me God, the last face you see will be mine and the last voice you hear will be mine. The winner of the match from Hell's Kitchen, New York City! Ray! Ray! I don't care about the wrestling. I don't care about the damn show. The only thing I care about is cutting Kurt Angle's throat and eliminating him. I'll even volunteer to do it. Thank you, Bob. I'll volunteer Get him. Anderson to do it. Oh. What? That's a you're afraid we can always have Karen take uh, care of her. Uh, I'm not. Are you going to do it? Boom. Thank you, brother. The new breed, the new Good blood. Job. You volunteered, not yourself, but me, to step foot in the ring with the best wrestler to ever lace up a pair of freaking boots in this business, Kurt Angle. Then you went ahead and screwed me. I didn't screw you. You couldn't get the job. You freaking screwed me. But I am a vindictive person. I'm gonna get you back. You're weak. I'm gonna become the world heavyweight champion. You're nothing more than a piece of dog crap on the bottom of my shoe on the way to winning the title. Hardcore justice, you're not booked. I'm not booked. Let's say we make a little date with frickin' destiny. He started it. What do you mean I instigated it? Why do I have to apologize? Fine, out of respect for you, I'll apologize. Oh, you got some balls, man. Relax. I'm gonna apologize to you. I'm sorry for the way I treated you. I'm sorry for the predicaments I've put you in. I'm sorry for anything that I've done that has offended you. Really? I'd yeah. like you to shake my hand. Oh, yes. So I'm going to shake your hand just like that. Shake your hand, everything's cool, right? After all the bull that you've done, I'm coming to you like a man. I'm extending my hand to you. I'm sorry. Who's the asshole now? Bully Ray takes on Mr. Anderson. Contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Hell's Kitchen, New York, Bully Ray! Almost from the very start, when Mr. Anderson joined Immortal, there were communication issues, there was friction between Anderson and Bully Ray. It started with volunteering Anderson for that match with Kurt Angle. We saw how that worked out, especially when the chair... Oh, wait, Mike, look at this, look at this. It's like Bully Ray is... Oh, what he's doing here? Yeah? Right by the broadcast table. Hey, hey, look. He's gonna, I think he's gonna... I think Bully Ray's obviously gonna, uh... I would assume, maybe... He can pack. You don't think Bully Ray would do that, do you? No. No. He would do that. Doesn't sound like him. And his opponent from Green Bay, Wisconsin, 
Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only freaking asshole in TNA wrestling. From Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mr. Yeah, I know he's behind me. Anderson knew it all the time. The potential for that bully ray blindside answered by a big series of right hands as the, the two exchange even before the opening bell. Oh, they're exchanging. That's right to all left here. You can hear the Ooh. physicality. Whatever it takes for Mr. Anderson using the microphone as a weapon and oh here they go again They gotta try and make their way to the ring if possible. This is what a match is supposed to take place, but oh, Look at those body shots right there those overhand rights by Anderson. He is tattooing Bully Ray I mean like that, you know listen Bully Ray uh, He was more or less forced by Hogan to Sure, unless there's an impact to eat some pro and apologize. Yeah, but the Mr. Apolo Anderson wasn't really an apology. Well, he apologized, then he just yeah, needed him in the gut. Come on, brother. Oh, 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 and Anderson promised us on Impact Wrestling and promised Bully Ray that he would get him back. And these two members of Immortal oh, well, have gotten so physical even before the opening bell. And, Bully Ray take the steel chain. Uh, this, is, this is what I like about them all. I mean, they're gonna handle it. They got issues within their within their deal, within their group. They fight it out. They go out there and just go at it. I like that. That's why they're nasty immortal. Well, every member of them. That starts at the top, but hopefully it's Eric Bischoff. And Anderson and Bully Ray just beating the hell out of each other. You talked about how physical it was. We heard the, the punches in the exchange close by the broadcast table. Backs five first right into the corner of the apron. And then he weakens Bully Ray and sends him face first into the steel steps. See Bully Ray trying to get his fingers in between that t-shirt and his throat. Get choked out right there on your esophagus with a basic t-shirt. That can happen. And Jackson James, boy, doing his damnedest to try and get these two guys in the ring and ring the bell and get this match officially underway. Yeah, I don't I don't uh, envy our referee here, Jackson James, at all. It's a tough, tough job here. Referee these two guys. No, 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 come on. No, 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 no. And the onslaught of Mr. Anderson continues. But all about strikes, punches, kicks in the corner. Well, that's a lot of weight to shoot across that ring. Bully Ray is a big boy, man. He's a big dude. Somebody you don't want to try and out physical no. in terms of a match. And that's the strategy that Mr. Anderson has decided to use. We'll see if he's successful or not. Maybe Billy Ray will pull out the lariat. And Anderson 
just when he gets to his feet. Dropped by the clothesline. Well, that's what Bully Ray does really well. He's not going to rush into anything. You see how everything he does is with purpose. He waits. He picks his area, picks his spot. What he wants to attack, he doesn't jump into stuff. That's a mark of a veteran. And whether a tag team wrestler or a singles competitor, yes, this is in the main event. Bully Ray is one of those guys who loves to dictate the pace of a match. That's why he's been successful his whole career, Bully Ray. No matter if it's tag teaming or, or, or in a single uh, situation. That was very smart right there by Bully Ray to trap Anderson's arms behind the ropes, headbutt his sternum, then chop the daylights out of him. Come on, you gonna fight me, asshole? Huh? You gonna fight me, asshole? Come on, hit me in the face! Hit me in the face! Come on! Ooh. Out to the center of the ring. Drop down for a slam and a cover. And go hold it and fish off. They made a mistake. You hear Bully Ray. Uh, he's reading the riot act this guy while he's beating down on Anderson. Referencing Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff of Immortal. That he told them that they made a mistake by bringing Anderson into the Immortal group. And I know you said that you love to see these two guys fight it out, both Immortal members. But I wonder about Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, what their thoughts are on this. Yeah, I don't know, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Wow, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Powerful elbow to the face and another pin yeah. attempt for Bully Ray. Well, you know, Anderson did have a flurry of offense there, but Bully Ray was able to shut him down. Bully Ray's got him exactly where he wants him. Taking the knee pad of Anderson and, and pulling it off the leg down to the to near his wrestling boot to expose the knee and then goes right back to trying to rearrange the facial features. One, two, three. Look at that. Anderson just getting nasty and dirty. You got to do that with a guy like Bully Ray. But Anderson's success, it's limited. Because uh, Bully Ray taking it right back to him. I've been on the other end of those shots by Bully Ray. That doesn't make for a fun Sunday evening, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's a big vertical suplex. And a cover. Bully Ray is about 6'4", uh, sorry, gonna about 6'5". You're going to fight me! That is to slap him in the face. And Bully Ray, it looks like he's trying to pull something out of... Uh, out of Anderson, maybe Bully Ray maybe asked for too much, because here comes Anderson. Yeah, you asked for it. Bully Ray, you're going to get it as both men on their knees exchanging right hands. Wow. Look at the old spit catch, old school uh, Bully Ray right there. Paul Nelson usually leads to the Bubba Bomb, but instead, Anderson able to turn oh. around and catch him out of nowhere with the DDT. One. Well, turning point in the match right here. Two. Both men are down. Who will get vertical first? Three. Four. Our live audience here. In support of Mr. Anderson, they want him up first. And as the referee's count reaches eight, both men again to their knees, and Bully Ray with the right, and Anderson answers, and here they go exchanging again. Oh. Fired up. Big time. Quick adrenaline rush by Anderson. Oh! Still not able to knock Bully Ray down. My God. Bully Ray says, bring it. Damn, it's like going into a brick wall. Wow. Clothesline finally takes Bully Ray off his feet. Running elbow. Like the old expression is. It's definitely not ballet, folks. 
This is just this physical to a new level, Watch Mike. This spinning neck breaker, cover, leg hook. This is not just match, move, hold. You know, big move, little move. These are two guys smashing into each other. These boys are gonna feel this tomorrow morning. They're gonna feel it tonight. Looked like he was gonna go for the mic check. Oh. A good counter with that back elbow by Anderson. Yeah, stop that choke slam by Bully Ray. Mic check again. Watch yourself. Oh, nice. Wow. Look at that. Anderson channeling Chuck Norris. <laughs> That was nice. Whatever it takes, right? Against Bully Ray. Yeah. Then the clothesline and then the cover. Get a little frustrated as Mr. Anderson. Really had to win there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh my oh, god. Big power move. Bully Ray. Again on top of Anderson, and again a two count. Incredible physicality in this oh, match from between the beginning. These, these two members of Immortal. Oh, from the beginning to, to right to this portion it's, of the match. You're right, five minutes before the opening bell, they started beating the hell out of each other. Now, wow, look at Bully Ray here. Anderson's not moving too much. Oh my God. Wow. Going off and see Bully Ray go to the ropes. Not able to connect, and whoa, now Anderson, whoa, 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 he oh, oh, oh. Right in the back of his head. Pin. <laughs> roll him, roll him. up, reverse Roll this up. Oh, the referee noticed that, that little bit right there. It looked like the left shoulder of Anderson was up a tee bit anyway. No matter, he was able to kick out. The referee did a good job there. Anderson stunned him momentarily with the elbow. Oh, oh man. God. Awesome, awesome timing by Bully Ray. I think the big boy is going to get the win right here. Yeah, caught him with a cutter off the ropes, drapes the arm. But it's not enough. Look at Anderson, man, showing loads of intestinal fortitude. And resilience with the ability to avoid that three count. Uh-oh. The result to the old big, heavy, huge chain deal right in front of the ref. Well, maybe not. Ref doesn't realize what's going on. Jackson James, uh, well, Bully Ray's not hiding it, so referee Jackson James, you gotta try to stop this if he can. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at the power! Anderson, taking Bully Ray up to his shoulders, drop down, pin, two! Oh. How wise was it for Anderson well, to go for a move this late in the match, well, where it, it takes so much strength to get Bully Ray up to your shoulders? Yeah, he got, this, got him up to his shoulders, but lost him. Definitely lost him, but it was smart by Anderson to, to top him and go for the cover. And you can also see Anderson favoring his back there as he goes now to the top. Looks like lifting a small forward car. And screw you! Oh, what did he just say? He said, screw you? I guess uh, Bully Ray's done. No, they don't want to go anymore. Hey, come on. Look, hey, like he's, he's gassed, he's exhausted, Bully Ray out there. The beating up. Uh, Anderson goes out and gets Bully Ray, tosses him back in. And the chain of Bully Ray all of a sudden becomes the property of Mr. Anderson. Well, the referee tries to take the chain from Anderson. Bully Ray, low blow, snaps him up and pins it. Your winner, Bully Ray! Get my chain! Hey, well, Bully Ray getting out here by the skin of his teeth. That was a massive low blow by Bully Ray. Referee never saw it. How are these two going to be able to coexist in Immortal? Bully Ray with the win in Hardcore Justice. As we send it to Jeremy Borash. Guys. Oh, Eric, guys. Geekman, gentlemen, please. Just one question real quick. Curious how the night's gone for you, Immortal. We saw what happened earlier with Does the six. Does it sound like it's going great? 
immortals running around playing fortunes game. They're running around like a bunch of 150 pound kids. Did you forget who the hell you were? You're a monster. You're not a little cruiserweight out there running around. What's wrong with you? Eat them alive. God. How many times? How many times are you going to let me down? First, it's the X Division. You dropped the ball. You crapped the bet on me. How many times? Oh, Bishop, you see that? You guys see that? Oh, yeah. Did you guys see that? No, Did you brother, see we're it? taking care of business back here, if that's okay with you. We're having a little problem with some of the members of Immortal. You didn't see it? No. I beat the hell out of him. Oh, my God. You would have been so proud of him. The only thing I didn't do is your big boot leg drop. One, two, three. I beat the crap out of him all over the arena. I beat the snot out of him, bro. I'm out. Let's go. Let's go. Not you. Not you. I beat my foot, man. I beat the hell out of him. Wow, how about that? Immortal. Yes. Still problems with the bit. They just froze out the monster. In the doghouse, big time. Tag team championship matchup. It's on deck tonight here at Hardcore Justice. Let's preview with the taglines our upcoming title bout. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers do not lie. Four total reigns as world tag champs, and in the midst of their longest reign ever, James Storm, Bobby Roode, the best tag team in the world, period. For months, Hernandez, Anarchia, lobbying for a tag title match. Tonight in Hardcore Justice, they finally get the chance that they've been demanding. And questions remain about the health of the defending champ, Beer Money. Rude nursing a shoulder injury for the past few months. Storm suffering a back injury Thursday on Impact Wrestling. Got to ask the question, will they be 100% tonight? Following contest scheduled for one fall is for the Tag Team Championship. Introducing first, accompanied by Rosita and Sarita, the team of Anarchy and Hernandez, Mexican America. But well, rumor has it, Mike, that Hernandez, he's got direct auto insurance on his own Camino. That's what I heard, I'm telling you. Well, you would know, you've always been a big auto insurance guy, Paul. Especially direct, love it. And they are the sponsors of tonight's Hardcore Justice pay-per-view event. DirectGeneral.com, get that free quote, get it now. I don't see that up here or any number of Mexican Americans sitting in the order on insurance office. <laughs> yeah, I'd like the glance coverage, please. Collision. <laughs> there might be some collisions in this match for the tag team titles, I'll tell you that. Jesus, I thought you were going to start talking about deductibles next. <laughs> All right, there you see Serena and Rosita, they were unsuccessful in their quest for the knockout tag team titles, but they're still freaking hot as hell. Hey, cut the music! Mira! Huh? You stupid Americanos! You don't want to drop our flag anymore! It's too big. Well, check it out, I said. We brought our own! And after tonight, when we become the World Tag Team Champions, you're gonna hang this flag in every arena around the world. Because for us, nada es imposible. opponents, the team of Cowboy James Storm and Bobby Roode, the Tag Team Champions, Fair Money! We're going to have to monitor the injury situation as it pertains to the back of Storm, the shoulder of Roode in this tag title defense. But you know, for the past several months, Beer Money has been in a unique situation. Not only defending those World Tag Team titles, but involvement in the Bound for Glory series for Beer Money. To me, that has to be a defining focus for the champions that could come back to haunt them tonight. Well, great point, and that could happen, Mike, but 
No, we've seen it already. We've seen them compete as a tag team of being the champions, Spear Money. And we've seen them, as you point out, work as a single wrestlers in the uh, BFG series. And it seems like they're both supporting each other. They're both highly competitive men. At the end of the day, they are Spear Money. They are an amazing tag team, hence why they got those beautiful gold titles around their waist. The question is, due to the injuries that you said that the champs have, will Mexican America be able to run right over Spear Money? No argument from me. The best tag team in professional wrestling to face well, that united familia. Because it's not only Hernandez and Anarchia you're going to have to deal with, but also Rosita and Sarita. We've seen a uh, oh, yeah. little preemptive move by yeah. your senior official. Yeah, and also Migos, uh, Senoritas. A little red hot chili cup and Sarita. Oh, easy there, bro. Oh. Get three hands in some time. It's a little tougher. Mike, a little bit, a little bit more couple for me. That's just me. That's just me. It's a personal thing. Opening bell for this world tag team title matchup at Hardcore Justice. And it starts off with Anarchia very wisely getting in the head of Bobby Roode. And that opens things up for Hernandez. That's what you gotta do if you're rude. You do, do not want Supermax to start wearing you down. That's a big, powerful dude, man. And Hernandez, Bobby Rude, trying to beat Anarchy here in the ring. It hits the corner. Got his sight set on Hernandez. Caught him with the chop follow up punch. And big Supermax able to turn it around on Bobby Rude when he comes. Flying out of the corner with a clothesline. That was pretty intense right there by Rude. One of the trademarks of Bear Money. Those quick, very effective tags. All about timing when it comes to tag team wrestling. Absolutely, timing and keeping a fresh man rocking and rolling. And that's what Beer Money uh, you know, does so watch this, well. Watch this drop down neck break. There you go. You got him, Mr. Come on. Being oh. interesting to see. I mean, so far, it looks like. Storm's back, it seems to be okay. He did shriek it pretty bad last Thursday. Nice hip toss on impact in that fight. And that hip toss takeover, that kind of a move would be something where we would probably see if it would affect him going yeah, forward. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike, absolutely, because you use your hips a lot in that. When you do that type of move, hips and lower back. A series of knee drops from Fear Money. Try and put Anarchia away here in the early going of this tag title match. Ooh. Ran into that, that elbow, but that, look at that, 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 that arm bar there, Fujiwara arm bar, we've seen Bobby Roode put out the legendary nature boy, Ric Flair with that hold. And it really is the perfect counter to clothesline attempt by Anarchia. Power slam by Roode, tags in Storm, who's now legal. Do whatever they want here. Oh, a little make a wish. A wishbone action there like it's Thanksgiving. Double clothesline for big Supermax. In illegally. Inverted atomic drop by Rude. Back to the two legal men in the match, Storm and Anarchia. <laughs> like Storm would do something to run and move. Oh, he stopped short. Clothesline, pin. That's that smart right there by Anarchy. He realized that Storm was going to bring him to his corner. He ends up shutting down James Storm with those body blows. Oh, look at that. It's spat on uh, Bobby Roode, I believe. That's part of Mexican America's game. Get inside the head of your opponents. Roode able to hook the leg. Oh, man, how about that? Just spun him around. You see that before? Just had to expose, expose the head. Of Anarchia for the storm kick. You see the oh, how mad that out. Hernandez looked like he wanted to rip the hair out of Rube's head. Rube's head. He got blasted with a kick by Storm. Big running clothesline by Storm oh, takes Hernandez out. Little skin the cat action by the Cowboy. Yeah, a little skin the six pack. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rude elevates his own partner onto Anarchia.
Draped over the guardrail is the target for James Storm to use on Anarchia. I think that Anarchia, he's a tough hombre, man. It's tough to get a win on him. You know, this guy came up in the streets, hardcore style. And after months of Mexican America lobbying for a shot at the tag team titles. They finally get it. This is their proving ground tonight. Oh, that momentum knocked down on Kier into referee all heaven. And Anarchy are gonna take advantage of that opening. The boots to Rude. Hernandez's gotta try and I'm sorry, am I getting this match? He's, he's gotta tag himself in here or something. Well, he's gonna get involved one way or the other. Legally or illegally with the throat of Rude. Across that, the steel cable choking the life out of Bobby Rude. And now, Anarchia, looks like he's loosening the tape around his wrist. Yeah, both members of Mexican America just ran right up through Bobby Rude. Double shoulder block by Mexican American now. Hernandez is legal. That's a strong cat right there, squeezing your throat across the middle rope. <laughs> Cannot explain how powerful that man Hernandez truly is. Rude able to fight back. Had a steam off wow. the ropes, and there's that tremendous shoulder block by Hernandez. Yeah, he calls that get off me, man. Just boom. I don't know how you say it in Spanish. Maybe it's get off me, amigo, or something. I don't know how you say it. You would, I don't know, maybe you do. Right? Yes, sir. Bilingual broadcast partner. Taz taking the place of Willie Urbina and Hector Guerrero tonight at Hardcore Justice. Here we go. And then oh, oh, oh. Storm in for the save. That's all about beer money. Having each other's backs here, Rude and Storm. Years that they've been teaming together. And our oh, oh, gonna use oh, Hernandez to just throw him right into Rude. Right back out, double underhook. Nice. Yeah, butterfly style suplex. You've seen that in a while, old, old school butterfly, butterfly suplex. Well done by Anarchia. Still an effective move as now Mexican America continues their strategy of cutting off the ring. It's not just a front face lock, as if that's not bad enough by someone as powerful as Hernandez. But with using trapping that second rope across the throat makes it real tough to deal with. The pure, raw, physical power and strength of Hernandez on display with this backbreaker across the shoulder. Yeah, he's just pure animal is Hernandez. Free elbow of Rude enables him to drop down, but just inches away from the tag. Hernandez grabbing onto the hair of Rude to prevent the tag. And how about that jumping double chop? Take that, puto! Double R spine buster by Rude, and I think it took so much strength on the part of Bobby Rude to come up with that spine buster yeah. that he's not able to go for the immediate pin. It's tough to lift up Hernandez. That's a big, dense dude, man. Now Bobby Rude's got to try and get James Storm in this match. Storm is just, he's dying, man. He's dying to get this, this match up here. Here we go. Line and then the elbow. Oh, and the lights with that big time back body drop. But that kick right to the sternum then slipped off the DDT but got enough over to drop Hernandez's head. Now Storm goes for Anarchia. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, wind him up. Power him down and right into the pin, but Hernandez with the double sledge stops the count. You know Bobby Roode just wants to pound on Hernandez. See, Bobby Roode was taking some beatdown by Hernandez earlier in this match. 
champs go for the double team. And storm and Rude take Hernandez over with the suplex. Shows their support for the World Tag Team Champions. The storm will follow up Anarchy in the corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. Use the leg strength to snap Anarchy out. And then Rude air oh, off the oh, top. Man. Splashed him. Storm covers. Oh, that was that real was close. Right there, wasn't it? Opportunity for Mexican America almost just disappeared. Mexican America's been complaining, crying, bitching, and moaning. They, you know, that, that there's a conspiracy against them. Opportunities here, boys. Let's see what you can do with it. Hernandez is going to try and follow up. Oh, wow. man. He just shoulder blocked. Storm the hell? Right to Anarchia. I thought, I tell you what, I thought Anarchia was going to get the win. It's a great idea on the part of Mexican America. Oh, 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 Hernandez is directing traffic. Tell him homeboy to get up on the turnbuckle, do something. Better get moving here. Storm able to land on his feet. We caught Hernandez flush with the double knees. And Anarchia up on top. Oh, he got pushed. Just, just kicked him right into the last call. Oh my Super God. kick connects. And Storm gets the pin and Fear Money retains. Your winners and still tag team champions. Wow, oh, wow, wow, wow. Excellent timing by Bobby Roode to help his partner out there because Anarchia had some bad intentions. Great timing right there by Bobby Roode. What a matchup. Still, tag team champs. The best tag team in professional wrestling. Bar none, case is closed. James Storm, Bobby Roode, Beer Money, yeah, there's still the chance. And quite honestly to me, they're still the best. Yeah, very impressive victory. An impressive outing by Mexican America also. Wow, what a physical night it has been yeah. here at Hardcore Justice this evening, live on pay-per-view from Orlando and still to come. We've got to set the stage for our main event, World Heavyweight Title Showdown. The icon, the Olympic gold medalist, Sting Kurt Angle. Well, when Kurt Angle's gonna get an opportunity to be champion again, Kurt Angle can pull it out. He can, he can beat anyone any night he wants when he's really focused, bound, and determined. But as we said at the top of this show, Sting, extremely, the world heavyweight champion, extremely unpredictable. You don't know what he's gonna do. I don't think Sting knows what he's gonna do. He's, he's crazy. We've talked about it for weeks. Yes, they've met in the past, but Kurt Angle has never met this Sting. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, uh, all the years Sting has been competing, this is like a new Sting. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to watch sometimes. Entertaining, actually, but he's dangerous because you don't know what he's going to do. It's hard to prepare for a guy when you don't know what he's going to do. To get pre-match comments from the challenger, Kurt Angle, we send it to JB standing by with the Olympic gold medalist. Thank you very much, Mike Tanay, and certainly as the main event awaits, Kurt Angle. Tonight's the night. You versus Sting for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's all on the line, and Sting has said point blank, I must win tonight. Your thoughts? Well, Sting is one of the best wrestlers in the world. I've never really beaten him. Tonight's a very important night for me, and... I know in order to be the best in the world, to be the best ever, I need to beat Sting. And he has to say what he has to say, but I want to tell him this. Sting, I won't lose. That's it. I won't lose. This belt is my lifeblood. It is everything that I need right now to right the ultimate wrong. This company belongs to Dixie Carter. It does not belong to Hogan and Bischoff. You want to be a masquerade around here? Put on a, a facade for everybody. <laughs> you got a choice, Terry. You can change things. You got the power to do it. Make the choice. I made a vow. 
to Dixie that before I hang my wrestling boots up for good, I'm going to bring the company back to its rightful owner. Sting, you've stepped over the line now. You've taken it too far. Everybody thinks you're snapped. I want the real holster to stand up again. Well, I got to tell you, there's something that's exhilarating about being insane. While you're trying to save this company for Dixie Carter, you've run into a minor speed bump. And that speed bump happens to be me. I'm the number one contender. And at Hardcore Justice, our paths are about to cross once again. It's strictly business, nothing personal. But what we are, are legends in this business. And only one of us can walk out the better man. And it's not just going to be me. It has to be me. Because I've given myself no other choice. No, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that in order to beat me, you're going to have to kill me. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to come real close, Kurt. In hardcore justice, I'm going to walk out with my hand raised. And that's what's real. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line as the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, challenges the insane icon, Sting. Here we go, matchup we have been anticipating. World Heavyweight Championship at stake, and Taz is gonna break down the tail of the tape, champion and challenger. Well, I mean, when I look at both these men, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of a height advantage for Sting, but body weight's exact. It's not often that someone has more experience than Kurt Angle. In this case, there is, and it's the world champion Sting, so, and again, uh, we gotta see what happens here. I mean, Kurt's guaranteeing victory, which is very, uh, very predictable, in my opinion, with Kurt Angle, that's his style. Break it down with the bullet points, and both challenger Angle and champion Sting, they admitted their mutual respect for each other, but both men have totally different reasons for wanting the world title. For Kurt Angle, it's all about proving that he's the best in the world. And until he can defeat Sting, without outside interference, Angle will not have achieved his goal. But for Sting, the championship equals power. In the ongoing battle with Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, Sting, in his words, wants to right the ultimate wrong, handing the company back to Dixie Carter, and will his unpredictable actions be the game changer? It's time to find out. physical standpoint as a competitor 99.999% uh, of the times he gets it done so let's see what happens here this is big Main event, 
to Jeremy Borash. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your Hardcore Justice main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Brian Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, Direct Auto Insurance proudly brings to you your Hardcore Justice main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 234 pounds and comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist and the number one contender for the heavyweight championship of the world, Kurt Angle. And now, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 258 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the current reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, the icon, Sting. Well, while we have seen these two battle in the past, everything from title matches to empty arena bouts, I have to admit, I'm so intrigued by seeing this world title match because of Kurt Angle's obsession to become world heavyweight champion and the unpredictability of that defending title holder, Sting, and here we go. That's the thing, I mean, the world champion, Sting, he's really got to be careful because he kind of snaps, does something weird, or gets a little crazy in there. Someone like Kurt Angle can attack and capitalize on, on, a, uh, on a miscue by Sting. And uh, we can crown a new champ that quick. Kurt, Kurt has the uh, physical capability to pull that off. And a point of the elbow, man, right into the elbow. This is what you don't want to do if you're Sting. You don't want to get to a wrestling match. I was thinking, you know, with is it really a great strategy to try to out-wrestle Kurt Angle? And that's a decision that Sting has to make when it comes to the game plan. Well, this is definitely not Sting's first barbecue. We know that. So, you know, I mean, as crazy as he is, I mean, uh, he knows what he's doing in there. A lot of years of success. Nice headlock takedown by the challenger. See, Kurt's all body weight right on the side of the cheek and face of, uh, of Sting. Doesn't miss a trick, does he? No, that's how you do it, man. That's it. All about leveraging your body on the other guy's head and arm or wherever you're holding him. And the crowd divided here in the impact zone for champion and challenger in this Hardcore Justice main event title showdown. Now, Kurt Angle keeps that one knee down to keep his balance right as he comes back up. Sting just running right through Angle there. Nice, quick hip toss. To that arm drag right there, controlling Sting's body. Look at the knee, the right knee of Kurt, placed right in the side of the face and head of Sting. Sting trying to move his face out of the way. You don't want the guy to control you that way. And while Kurt Angle has control at this point, he's already thinking several moves ahead, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's damn right. He definitely, yeah, that's an awesome point by you, Mike. I mean, that hammer lock, the problem is mine as he had that arm bar on, because that's what great wrestlers do. You have to think several holds ahead. Sting able to back Angle up into the corner. Caught him unaware with the elbow. Reels off a series of rights and then sends in the chest first from the corner and then takes out the knee. Well, if it was the back of the knee, it couldn't really tell Michael the back of the hamstring of Kurt. It almost looked like Kurt favoring the hamstring, putting his hand down there and getting it. There is a hamstring, man. He's trying to knot up that hamstring. That's what he's doing. And why wouldn't you if you're going to use the scorpion deadline? Yeah, absolutely. 
And then also, what that does, if you could chop and rip apart a hamstring on Kurt Angle, it's going to completely eliminate the suplex arsenal that Kurt can put on you because he cannot back arch into those throws. Wow. Elbow catches Sting right in the face as he came off the ropes. Physical yep. nature of the Olympic gold medalist on display here. Kurt keeps grabbing at that, at that left hamstring. That thing could be knotted up pretty good. I know Kurt stretches a lot before a match. That definitely would help, but when the guy decides to sting, oh my God, that's not gonna help the hamstring. We've heard Kurt Angle talk in recent weeks about preparation to go back to the Olympics. And we see a Kurt Angle who's dropped I think he said something in the neighborhood of like 15, 20 yeah. pounds. I don't think he even needed to do that, but he did. He wants to get in, in his wrestling weight. Makes for certainly a quicker Ooh. Kurt Angle. And I think Sting has had an awfully good game plan to this point to counteract so much of Angle's potential offense. And the world champion Sting right here. He's just, he's got complete control of this match. And you're seeing the violent side of Sting right there breaking the count so the referee doesn't count him out. And nobody has been more committed than Sting when it comes to holding on to that lifeblood that is the World Heavyweight title. And Ooh. you can see that Sting's in incredible condition as well. Yep. Both men, both men preparing and knowing that this match tonight here at Hardcore Justice is going to be so important to the future of this entire organization. And even though there's that respect amongst these men, oh, nice. Watch this, watch this. Ooh, follow away slam by, uh, by Angle. And I, I'm not sure whether he had that in mind or whether the leg may have gone out on him. Uh, yeah, he, he's slapping at his hamstring again. He snatched in that fireman carry real quick into that back Samoan drop, but I don't know how much that might have affected Kurt's left hamstring. Gotta keep an eye on that. It was enough to drop Sting. This is where you don't want, you don't want to deal with Kurt dissecting you while you're on, on, on the mat, especially while you're on bottom. Chin lock applied by the challenger. Kurt's got all his body weight, his buttocks, right in the lower back of Sting. And that really takes the wind out of you. You can't explain it to people, man, how much that bothers you. When it's later in the match and you're starting to suck some wind and the guy's hanging all over you and he's putting his weight on you, it really sucks. It was imperative for Sting to get back up to his feet, and that's exactly what he did. Oh, God. Back after Sting caught Angle with elbows. Oh, man. Kurt had that oh. knee that just, can't talk about taking the wind right away from the champ, right into the midsection with the knee. Took Sting right off his feet, jacked him up. Back Kurt. Drops Tack him across the knee and right into the pin. Tacking the rib cage. Went for that hard knee in the belly. Now you see the knee, the right, right knee of Kurt placed in the rib cage area, the back of the rib cage. Yeah, chin lock again, but a little different variation because of the placement of Angle's legs and knees. And there it is right there, great shot. And uh, looks like Kurt might have an attack the midsection in mind type deal going on here. It's just so interesting to see the strategy between these two because every time that Angle tries to turn it into a wrestling match and tries to out Matt Russell Sting, Sting comes back with a quick flurry of offense. Oh, he has to. That's smart by Sting. He has to do that. Look at that. Oh, wow. Explosiveness. Fired right out of that corner. I don't know if Kurt even know what the hell hit him. You saw a great camera shot of the close-up of the face of Kurt Angle as his eyes rolled into the back of his head after, the, after his head made contact with the canvas after that big clothesline out of the corner by the champion. Both men down. Both men down. Referee Brian Hebner counting. See who gets standing up first. Six. Watch Angle. Oh, thought he was going to measure it. Maybe go for a oh, suplex, but God. Sting was prepared. Look at Sting's like hit a second win here. Shifted it in fourth gear. Boom! Wow. Right on that surgically repaired neck. DDT, got... pin, in. That DDT really contorts your neck and your spinal column. So, uh, I was, I was, I was really, really, really ugly by Sting with that DDT. So many of the moves. Oh, wait a minute. Both men have been so well thought out as Angle goes to his special suplex pin. Two count. 
The over the head belly to belly suplex by Angle. Look at Angle stalking. Angle slam here. Oh, counter. Stin saw it coming and able to catch him in the lower back with an elbow and then drops him down. This could do it right here. Sting pin two. Ooh. Sting had a look in his eyes like, what the hell do I got to do to beat this man? We talked earlier about Sting going for the Scorpion because weakening the hamstring of Angle. I thought that's what he was preparing to do. Angle saw that, sends him to the ropes, and now we're going to go for the multiple German suplexes. We're at two and counting. Tough to break that grip, and as you can see, the grip is sucked in by Kurt. It's a third. It's a hat trick right there. This could be it. Going to roll Sting over. Going to go lateral. Press two. Well, you're right. Every time he hits one of those suplexes, you also see how Angle cinches up the grip right across the midsection and takes out the air oh. and takes the wind away from the champion. And then when your body hits the mat, it knocks the hell out of you. But also it blow when you hit that canvas. But also doing all those pulls takes something out of you too. But Kurt Angle right now. Not afraid to go Look high at this. Risk. Look at this. And zero reward for the Olympic gold medalist who goes for the top rope moonsault. Kurt Angle throwing caution to the wind. Took a shot, high risk, he missed. Stay oh, 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 how about wow. that? Huge angle slam. Yeah, out of Angle's playbook and leads to two. Oh. Did he get it? Boy, it couldn't be any closer. Good God, that was close. Didn't expect to see that angle slam out of Sting now. Scorpion, Scorpion, here it is. How effective has Sting's offense been to this point? The weakening of the leg and the hamstring of Angle leads to the Scorpion Deathlock, a, oh a move God. that has gained Sting through the years. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of victories. Kurt's caught in the middle of the ring. Mike has got to try and get to a rope to break this hold. Oh my God, the pain that Kurt is in. Oh, is he going to tap here? You can see that he's fighting through that pain. It's excruciating. And he's still got a long way to go to catch the rope. Look at Kurt fight his ass off to get there, and he does. That's that drive, and that's that determination. Takes a lot out of you, though. Stinger splash, time up coming. Oh, God. Great close-up shot again. It's over 240 pounds, just nailing him. You don't know what's just coming. Ooh. Angle saw him coming that time. Ooh. There it is. Angle slam and cover. Here's two. A lot of near falls in this match. We almost crowned a new world champion right there. Champion and challenger. Regroup. Kurt struggling to get to a vertical both, base. Both men using the ring ropes to get to their feet. That's how physical this is oh. been. Quickness of sting. Avoiding angle who went right into the corner. Not sure, did his shoulder go all the way to the post? It looked like it might have. Oh, look at this! Oh, my God. Sting with Angle's own ankle lock submission. First, he tried to beat him with the angle slam. And now it's the submission hold applied of the ankle lock. And again, Kurt's in no man's land when it comes to getting a rope break. Might have to go to another strategy to try and break this. Roll you, through. you can see that he's thinking of tapping also. He's got to try to roll through. Yeah, that's There's exactly it. Free leg, free leg. And then the quick double leg. Uh oh. Whoa. Uh -oh. That'll turn about fair play, right? Oh, he's got that thing overhooked, that scorpion leg lock. Both men is grabbing on his own ankle. Look at Kurt's in pain. Sure. After being in the ankle lock. Is he able to apply that scorpion with, with really all of the pressure because he's got to favor the angle? Oh my God, he's got that cinched in, but yeah, exactly. Can Kurt get all of the force in it? Where he keeps grabbing at his own ankle. Sting crawling closer and closer and extends the hand to get the rope break. True physical battle here. Both men taking pages out of each other's playbook. Again to the lower back, he had that scorpion leg lock on, which doesn't only affect the legs, but it does greatly affect your spine, your lower back, and all the muscles in your back. Hence why Angle is attacking the lower back. Series of those double sledge-like moves to the lower back. Wow. 
head that goes back to the grip again. It's going to go back to the multiple Germans. Garcia, Suplex one. He's just an animal. He's just, it's so hard to do what he's doing at this, this late deep in the match. Yeah, especially from a, a conditioning standpoint, it's so difficult. Got blasted right there. That elbow was on point. And how about Sting taking angle? Oh, oh lost him. Wait, wait a minute. It was Kurt. He dropped down, and Kurt who applies the ankle Sting's off. Sting's in trouble. Sting's in trouble here. Again, ring positioning for Kurt is pretty damn good. Out towards the center. He'll rip that damn ankle off. Sting might want to tap, but if he taps, he loses the world title. That's his lifeblood as Brian Hefner, the referee, is right there. Perfect positioning to see if Sting oh is either going to tap or verbally submit. It's not just his ankle, Sting's knee. Oh, Sting able to roll through. Angle shoulders down. Wow. And they're amazing. <laughs> 2 .9, 2 and 9 tenths. I thought, to win. I thought that was the end of the party right there. Oh, the ref! Oh, oh my God! Angle went for that Inzaghiri kick. He, he cut Sting on the side of the head, but then oh. he nailed Hebner flush. Yeah, no way Hebner's getting up. We're gonna have to get another ref out here or something. It's a world title match. Hebner just got cracked. Both men are down. All three men down. All three men are down, exactly. And wait, the oh, crowd what? here at the Impact Zone rises to their feet as Immortals Hulk Hogan with a steel chair in hand is coming down to the ringside area. And more than the area, Hogan's headed right into the ring. Well, Hogan has a disdain for both of these men. Hogan lining up, staying steel chair in hand. Oh, watch. Oh, oh, wait, wait. And Angle takes the chair right out of Hogan's hands. Angle has said repeatedly, he does not want any interference. In oh, the hell? What was that? Kurt Angle just used the steel chair across the back of Sting and then connects with the angle slam. Angle covers, gets two, and gets three. And my God, Kurt Angle has won the title. No winner of the match. And new heavyweight champion of the world, Kurt Angle. I think everybody is shocked at what just happened here, including Hulk Hogan. Think of what we've just seen. For weeks, Kurt Angle has said, I want one thing and I want one thing only. I want a clean victory. I want no outside interference. I want to pin Sting and win that world title. Hogan introduces the chair. Angle uses it as a weapon. And Kurt Angle is the new world heavyweight champion. Kurt guaranteed victory, and he did it. We crowned the new world heavyweight champion in Kurt Angle.